I now call to order the meeting of the Board of Education of Baltimore County for Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. I invite you to recite the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, to recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag to be led by Ms. Roa Hassan. We will then have a moment of silence and recognition of those who have served education in Baltimore County. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Tonight's Board of Education meeting is being held live, is being held in person and broadcast through the, US, through the BCPS online live meeting broadcast. And on BCPS TV, Comcast Channel 73 and Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this evening will be done by roll call vote. The first item on the agenda is the consideration of the June 13th agenda. Dr. Williams, are there any additions or changes to tonight's agenda? There are none. Hearing none, the agenda stands as presented. Earlier this evening, the board met in closed session pursuant to the Open Meetings Act for the following reasons. To one, discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, consult with counsel to obtain legal advice, and conduct collective bargaining negotiations or consider matters that relate to the negotiations. The summary of the closed session and open session information summary can be found on board docs under this meeting agenda date. Next on the agenda is a special order of business recognizing our student member of the board, Ms. Roa Hassan. At this time, could Roa and Ms. Harvey, Dr. Williams, join me in front of the dais. The following resolution is being presented by the Board of Education and it reads, Whereas Roa Hassan has served as the, as the student member of the Board of Education of Baltimore County with honor and distinction for the 2022-2023 school year, including serving as chair of the board's legislative and governmental relations committee and participation on the board's audit, equity, curriculum, and policy review committees. And whereas her passion for student advocacy began in 2019, as president of the Perry Hall Class Senate, Senate, events coordinator for the Perry Hall Muslim Student Association, and vice president of Perry Hall Girl Up. Her service continued as the legislative affairs coordinator of the Baltimore County Student Councils and vice chair of the Maryland High School Democrats Women's Caucus. In 2020, Roa founded Mike Up Maryland, a student-led organization advocating for equity and empowering youth involvement. And whereas Roa, Roa's commitment to the students of Baltimore County is shown through her mental health resolution approved on February 28, 2023. This resolution recognizes the board's commitment to equitable access to mental health resources, ensuring the safety of all students, and elevation of the student's voice through the establishment of a seat of a student seat on the Baltimore County Public Schools Mental Health Advisory Council. <laughs> you put it out, no, it's funny. <laughs> through her tears, Roa was also <laughs> instrumental in the historical passing of House Bill 175, which provides... Yeah. This bill 
provided that future Baltimore County student members of the board with the right to vote on budgetary matters. And whereas Roa is to be commended for bringing honor to this school system as she continues her education at the University of Maryland to major in both public policy and government and politics. Now, therefore, big words. Be it, be it resolved that the Board of Education of Baltimore County assembled in regular session on the 13th day of June in the year 2023 expresses to Roa our fondest regards and gratitude for her services. <laughs> and be it further resolved, <laughs> be it further resolved <laughs> <laughs> that the board herewith extends its best wishes to Roa for happiness, good health, and continued success in future endeavors, and directs a copy of this resolution to be recorded among the permanent records of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. Thank you and congratulations, Roa. Okay, in addition, it's short. In addition, I'll read very quickly. The Baltimore County Student Council would like to present you with a plaque oh. rec <laughs> recognizing you. So, fellow board members, I move that the board accept resolution 2023-02 in recognition of our student member of the board, Roa Hassan. May I have a second? Second, Pumphrey. All in favor, say aye. 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 The motion has passed. Congratulations, <laughs> Rella. I'd like to invite Delegate Cheryl Pastor to the front. So give her the box there, Miss Booker Dwyer. You got okay, you got it? Okay. I didn't think I would leave. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 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 Okay, guys. Here, hold this. Maybe you won't cry. Here, hold this. I don't know. I'm so proud of Roa and so happy that she's going to the University of Maryland College Park. Woohoo! So, Roa, on the behalf of all of the folks from the 11th District, Senator Hedelman, who is at an event tonight, was not able to come. Delegate Stein, who's also at an event <laughs> and wasn't able to come. And Delegate Cardin, who is out of town but they all told me to give you their love and their well wishes. So on behalf of them, the Maryland General Assembly official citation, be it hereby known to all that sincerest congratulations are offered to Roa Hassan in recognition of her excellent service and commitment to the students and staff of Baltimore County Public Schools while serving as the student member of the school board during the 2022 and 2023 school year. Presented on this 13th day of June, 2023 by Senator Shelley Hedelman, Delegate John Cardin, Delegate Cheryl Pasteur, and Delegate Dana Stein. Congratulations. I'll be able to give her a paycheck. <laughs> and she's gonna work in my office while she's going to school. Thank you, Delegate Pastor. And um, lastly, I'd like to say welcome to Ms. Kayla Drummond, who will be our incoming student member of the board for the 2023-2024 school year. So thank you, and Ms. Hassan, you can return to your seat with your plaques and get yourself together, okay? <laughs> okay, all right. 
Dr. Williams, you're next. So if you want the box of Kleenex, just, okay. Oh, it's Miss Scott next. Oh, never mind. Well, you got, got Miss Scott next. Where is Miss Scott? Okay, so we're going to ask Miss Scott to now join us up here. We have another recognition. So next on the agenda is a special order of business recognizing our former chair of the Board of Education, Miss Makita Scott. And Ms. Harvey is also going to read your resolution. Resolution 2023-03. Whereas Makita Scott has served as a member of the Board of Education of Baltimore County with distinction and honor from December 2018 through November 2022. And whereas she has provided exemplary service to the students, parents, and staff of Baltimore County Public Schools as chair of the board, December 2020 through November 2021. And whereas Ms. Scott has worked actively for the achievement of all Baltimore County students with focus on equity and raising the bar and eliminating achievement gaps. And whereas she has served on the following Board of Education Committees, the Equity Committee, where she was instrumental in the creation of, the of this committee and served as chair, Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee, where she served as vice chair, and the Policy Review Committee, where she served as chair. And whereas she represented the Board of Education of Baltimore County on the Maryland Association of Boards of Education, Equity Committee, Legislative Committee, and the Federal Relations Network Committee. And whereas Ms. Scott as chair represented the Board of Education admirably at numerous state and county events. And whereas Ms. Scott always placed the needs of all students as her first priority and has committed her time and expertise to the Baltimore County Public Schools community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of Baltimore County herewith assembled in regular session on the 13th day of June in the year 2023 recognizes the outstanding contributions of Ms. Makita Scott and be it further resolved that the board does herewith extend its deepest appreciation and gratitude for her dedication, loyalty, and service, and further extends its best wishes for good health, happiness, and continued success in her future endeavors. Congratulations, Ms. Thank Scott. <laughs> So I move that the board accept resolution 2023-03 in recognition of former Board of Education Chair Makita Scott. May I have a second? Second from Pong. All in favor say aye. 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 The aye. motion has passed. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. Tradition is that following one service as board chair, a portrait is done and placed with the other former presidents and chair's portraits in room 123 across the hall. At this time, on behalf of the board, I would like to ask everyone to acknowledge the leadership and dedication that Ms. Scott provided the board and school system during her tenure as board chair. We appreciate your work as member of the board. And... Thank you, um, and thank you for your leadership and your continued support. So Ms. Keita still is part of uh, one of the equity um, advisory groups, so she is still actively assisting us with our work. So I want to thank you for your continued um, support of BCPS. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Ms. Scott, did you want to say anything? Did you want to say? Did you want to say anything? Or you? Sure, yes, thank you all so much for coming. Um, thank you all for, for your support. Thank you to the board. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for everything that, that you have done. Um, and I would just say, um, I understand I'm the first black female chair in 100 years, 175 years, uh, yes. <laughs> and um, I do not intend to be the last, because I, I, I do not intend to be the last. <laughs> and, 
I would also like to say let's make that the the norm of inclusion of all voices and everyone and let's make the first black female chair of the board not an anomaly but a regular occurrence. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a special order of business recognizing Superintendent Dr. Daryl L. Williams. The following resolution is being presented by the Board of Education and it reads, whereas, Dr. Darrell L. Williams has served as Superintendent of Baltimore County Public Schools with honor and distinction since July 2019. And whereas through his development of the compass, our pathway to excellence, he has guided the school system toward a path of academic and operational excellence focused on raising the bar, closing gaps, and preparing Team BCPS for the future. And whereas as a result of Dr. Williams' leadership, BCPS has weathered a once in a lifetime global COVID-19 pandemic and a cybersecurity attack, and as a result has grown in its innovative practices and collaboration across offices and agencies to meet the needs of students and staff. And whereas due to his focus on improving student achievement, BCPS has prepared a variety of pathways to prepare students for careers, the military, and post-secondary education and integrated a continuous improvement process that measures the effectiveness of focused actions and supports to meet the specific needs of students, staff, and communities. As a result of strategic efforts and investments to expand student options and opportunities, BCPS has the largest percentage of students in the state of Maryland who take career and technical education courses. Dr. Williams lengthened the school day to provide additional time for learning, as well as expanded academic resources and support to students during the school day, after school, on Saturdays, and through summer programs. Under his leadership, BCPS has expanded access to dual enrollment and tuition-free programs at the Community College of Baltimore County for all BCPS high school students and made significant gains in advanced placement exam participation and performance. And whereas supporting all students is Dr. Williams' first priority, he prioritized the social emotional well-being of students by increasing the number of school counselors and social workers in schools, by creating the Black Boy Joy and Genius Initiative to improve the educational experience and, out and outcomes for black boys in BCPC BCPS, elevated the importance of community partnerships by building a network of more than 800 system partners, launched a new program that placed safety assistance in all secondary schools, and elevated student voice and leadership. And whereas, through his I Am Team BCPS campaign, he has brought together communities in support of the system. And whereas Dr. Williams focused on equity and meeting individual student needs, has resulted in the establishment of critical programs and initiatives that prioritize high quality teaching and appropriate supports in every classroom and promote positive school climate and morale. And whereas his unwavering commitment, steadfast advocacy, and passion in pursuit of educational excellence has served the students and families of BCPS now, therefore be it resolved that the Board of Education herewith assembled in regular session on the 13th day of June in the year 2023 expresses to Dr. Williams on behalf of the citizens of this county our deepest appreciation and gratitude for his valuable service and be it further resolved that the board does herewith extend its deepest appreciation and gratitude 
for his dedication, loyalty, and service, and further extends its best wishes for good health, happiness, and continued success in his future endeavors, and that a copy of this resolution be recorded among the permanent records of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. I move that the board accept resolution 2023-04 in recognition of Superintendent Dr. Daryl L. Williams. May I have a second? Second, Pumphrey. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. 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 The motion aye. has passed. <laughs> Tradition is that following one service as superintendent, a portrait is done in place with the other former superintendents in the Greenwood Administration Building. At this time, on behalf of the board, I would ask everyone to acknowledge the leadership and dedication that Dr. Williams has provided the board and school system during his tenure as superintendent. And the big unveiling. Ready? Woohoo! There you are. <laughs> and next, I'd like to invite Delegate Cheryl Pastor back to the front. And she will present a delegation citation to Dr. Williams. Whoops. <laughs> Dr. Williams, it certainly is my pleasure, having worked with you, to be able to present this citation from District 11, the Maryland General Assembly. <laughs> The Maryland General Assembly official citation, be it hereby known to all that sincerest congratulations are offered to Dr. Darrell L. Williams in recognition of his committed service and leadership for the students, parents, and employees of Baltimore County Public Schools from July 1, 2019 to June 30th, 2023, presented on this 13th day of June, 2023, by Senator Shelley Hedelman, Delegate John Cardin, Delegate Cheryl Pasteur, and Delegate Dana Stein, Baltimore County Legislative District 11, especially from beautiful 11A. <laughs> Would you like to say anything? Okay, back there. Okay, all right, so we are now gonna return to our seats. Thank you, I'm Delegate Pastor. I know there's a superintendent's report coming, but I do want to just offer um, just a few words. Uh, to our BCPS students, I want you to continue to follow your dreams and work hard. The resources and partnerships are here to address gaps, accelerate learning, and prepare you to be college and career ready. The road you travel will have twists and turns along the way, but stay focused and ask for help. There is at least one adult in every school building whom you can trust. To our BCPS parents and guardians, continue to stay involved and check your child's performance, attendance, and opportunity for rigorous courses and programs. Please keep them involved in clubs and extracurricular activities and monitor, please, their social media and their circle of friends. The staff at your school need to know you and your child and that triad home, school, and student must continue to be strong, tight, and have open communication. 
to our BCPS staff, administrators, and principals continue to learn and grow and use a variety of strategies to meet the needs of all students. Our students want a positive working relationship with their teachers, and they want our teachers and staff to hold them accountable and to care. Keep students at the center of your work, and our students will always remember you. I thank our union partners who truly understand collaboration and partnership and really know how to build trust with administration and with each other. To our central office staff, thank you for being present during the many issues that we had to face as a team with the pandemic cyber attack, efficiency review, and inaccurate stories about our system and me. You know the truth and allow your actions to speak greater than your words. To our BCPS partners, stakeholders, organizations, and education foundation, continue to model true meaning of partnerships and ways to support our system and schools. Thank you for being active in our schools and school communities and for supporting our students, staff, and families in a variety of ways. You know how to build up, then tear down. And to our Board of Education, to this new board, I hope you will work to support Dr. Yarbrough and her team as they are invested as I was in the lives of 111,000 students and their families. Show your support outwardly and understand the important role that you have with governance. It is the collective body that will help the superintendent and system move the needle in the right direction for all students. There's no I in team and don't be swayed by the political pressures. I am forever grateful for this opportunity to serve as the superintendent of Baltimore County Public Schools. And like my graduating seniors, I'm ready to close this chapter. When I joined Team BCPS, my family joined as well. They have watched from afar and up close. They are present tonight. They know that this assignment was ordained by God in January and in January of 2023, we made a decision to move on on and with his blessings. There's a quote by Pablo, Pablo Culello, excuse my sp broken Spanish. If you're brave enough to say goodbye, life will reward you with a new hello. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to my new hello. For now, Mrs. Williams and I will still remain in this area, but I'm ready for a new challenge in my life. And finally, to Dr. Yarbrough. I know you will continue to keep students at the center of all decision making. And I know that you have the skills to continue to make the necessary changes for this system to thrive. I pray that you are covered as you assume this new role and you will receive the support you need to do this job well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Williams. The next item on the agenda is personnel matters, and for that I call on Mr. McCall. Good evening. Good evening, Board Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, Superintendent Dr. Williams, and members of the board. I'd like the board's consent for the following personnel matters, terminations, retirements, resignations, non-renewals, leaves, deceased recognition of service, certificate appointments, and central area education advisory council appointments. Do I have a motion to approve the personnel matters as presented in exhibit G1? So moved, Harvey. Do I have a second? Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Second, Dominowski. I'm sorry. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker-Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Okay. 
Do I have a motion to approve the personnel matters as presented in Exhibit G2 through G8? We just did G1, so now we're doing G2 through G8. So moved, Booker Dwyer. Thank you, do I have a second? Second, Pumphrey. Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Tominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is administrative appointments, and for that I call on Dr. Williams. Madam Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, and members of the board, I'm bringing forward the following administrative appointments for your approval. There are several. Principal of Stimmers Run Middle School, assistant principals in the following schools, Church Lane Elementary, Dundalk Elementary, Grange Elementary, Hawthorne Elementary, and two positions at Overly High School. Coordinator of the Office of College and Career Readiness, Fiscal Supervisor 3 in the Office of Title I, Pupil Personnel Worker, Office of School Climate and Culture, Senior Community Facilitator, there are two in the Office of Title I, Homeless Programs and Community Schools, two positions as Specialist in School Programs, Office of Title I, Specialist Judy Center, Office of Early Childhood Programs, Supervisor Business Systems, Office of Food and Nutrition Services, and the Chief Human Resources Officer in the Division of Human Resources. Do I have a motion to approve the administrative appointments as presented in Exhibit H1? So moved, Harvey. Thank you, do I have a second? Second, Savoy. Thank you, any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Dr. Williams. So our first appointee is Christy L. Allen as the principal of Stimmers Run Middle School. Please stand. <laughs> Joining tonight with Ms. Allen is her daughter, Audrey Allen. Please stand. Is she here? He didn't hear you. Joining you is your daughter. Actually, she wasn't able to make it. <laughs> Dr. <P> <laughs> Principal Ridgely, yes. <laughs> Dr. Paris, you can remain standing. Thank you. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Allen brings 25 years of service in Baltimore County. Currently, she was the assistant principal at Ridgely middle school prior to that she was assistant principal at middle river middle school and she has experience as a stat teacher and vocal music teacher at stricker middle school and she participated in the aspiring leadership program in 2011. congratulations the new principal <laughs> stimmers run <laughs> next we have Gigi Aya cartwright as the new assistant principal at Overly High School. <laughs> Joining her is her husband, Bobby Cartwright, and he's standing, videotaping, thank you. Um, she brings 17 years of, of service in Baltimore County. Uh, current, previously, she was a special ed teacher inclusion at Overly. She has held several positions at Milford Mill Academy, Woodlawn High School, Winfield Elementary, Sandy Plains Elementary, Woodlawn Middle School, and she even had previous service in Frederick County and Baltimore City Public Schools. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have Amanda Boyd as the new assistant principal at Hawthorne Elementary. Come on through. <laughs> yes, attending with her is her husband, Justin Boyd. We welcome you. She brings 21 years of service. Previously, she served as the staff development teacher at Hawthorne Elementary. She also served as a stat teacher at Seneca Elementary and classroom teacher at Vincent Farm Elementary and Seneca Elementary. Congratulations, Ms. Boyd. <laughs> Next, we have Caitlin Brennan as the new coordinator in the Office of College and Career Readiness. Where's Ms. Brennan? She's come, there she is. And 
you have someone with you? I have my wonderful supportive husband, Mark, with me. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark, for being with us. Uh, Ms. Brennan brings 17 years of service. Uh, previously, she served as the assistant principal at Sparrows Point High School. She also served as the teacher of business education at Sparrows Point High School, teacher of Spanish at Sparrows Point High School, and previous experience in the Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have Lindsay A. Bugda as the new specialist. School Programs, Office of Title I. There's, there's, there she is. <laughs> Attending with her is her wife, Tracy Miller. P please stand. Tracy, thank you. She brings, she brings 20 years of service in Baltimore County Public Schools. Previously, she served as a staff development teacher at Middle River Middle School. She also served as a stat teacher, reading teacher, English teacher, and Again, a reading teacher at Middle River, also a reading teacher at Deep Creek Middle School, and she served and participated in the Aspiring Leadership Program in 2012. Congratulations, Ms. Bugda. <laughs> Next, we have Claudia M. Chamberlain as our new pupil personnel worker in the Office of School Climate and Culture. There she is. Joining her is her husband, Charlie Chamberlain. Welcome. She brings 25 years of service in Baltimore County. Previously, she served as a school counselor at Lansdale Middle School, as well as a guidance counselor at Arbutus Middle School and home economics teacher at Middle River Middle School. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have Maureen E. Kritz as the new specialist, Judy Center, Office of Early Childhood program. Where is Ms. Chris? Oh, way in the back. There she is. Attending with her is the supervisor, Lisa Dingle. Ms. Dingle here. Ms. Dingle. Ms. Dingle, stand please. There you go. Ms. Uh, Kritz brings 21.4 years of service. Previously, she served as a facilitator in Campfield Early Learning Center. Prior to that, she was an assistant principal at Mars Estate, as well as Sandy Plains. And prior to that, she serves as a resource teacher and classroom teacher at Randallstown Elementary School. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have Joshua M. Foy. Foy as the assistant principal at Dundalk Elementary School and attending tonight with him is his wife, Casey Foy. Welcome. <laughs> he brings over a little over seven years of experience in Baltimore County. Previously, he was a psychologist in the Office of Psychological Services, as well as Battle Grove Elementary School. And he brings prior experience in Prince George's County Public Schools. Congratulations, Joshua Foy. Next, we have a unique V. Gray as the new assistant principal at Church Lane Elementary School. There she is. <laughs> and attending tonight is her current principal, uh, Jordan Filderman from Headville Elementary School. Please stand, yes. <laughs> Miss Gray, she brings over 16 years of experience in Baltimore County. Previously, she was the staff development teacher at Hebville Elementary School. She was a resource teacher and classroom teacher, all at Hebville Elementary School. They will miss you at Hebville Elementary School. Congratulations, Ms. Gray. <laughs> Next, we have Brent T. Harry as the new fiscal supervisor three in the office of Title I, and attending with him is his significant other, Janae Scott. Please stand. Congratulations and welcome. <laughs> Mr. Harry brings over four years of service in Baltimore County. Previously, he served as the fiscal supervisor two in the office of Food and Nutrition. Prior to that, he was an accountant two in that same office. He's had previous experience in the state of Maryland Department of Labor, licensing and regulation, Michaels and All Angels Episcopal Church, and Coppin State University. Congratulations, Mr. Harry. <laughs> Next, we have Asia S. Hinton Sweets as the new 
Senior Community Facilitator, Office of Title I, Homeless Programs and Community Schools. And joining her is her mom, Ellen Hinton. Welcome, Mom. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Hinton Sweets bring over a little bit over a year of service in Baltimore County. Previously, she served as the Assistant Director of Community Schools for Positive School Center and Promise Heights in the University of Maryland School of Social Work Positive School Center. Prior to that, she served as the Lead Community School Coordinator, Middle School Coordinator at Child's First Authority Incorporated and the Community Co School Coordinator at Child First Authority. Again, she also has been a teacher at Winan Elementary School. Welcome back. And news producer of WBFF Fox 45 News. Wow. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Next, we have Myra I. Lee as the new supervisor, business systems, food services, in the Office of Food and Nutrition <laughs> Services. <laughs> and attending with her is her sister, Manika Hadley. I hope I said that correctly. Oh, no. OK. I tried. Um, <laughs> She brings over 1.7 years of, of service in Baltimore County. Prior to that, she was the data analyst in the Office of Food and Nutrition Services. And prior to that, we stole you from Hartford County Public Schools. Yes. And she also served at Johns Hopkins University and Comcast Cable. Congratulations, Ms. Lee. So this happens every time <laughs> before I can actually say anything. Uh, it is with great pleasure that I introduce Homer McCall II as the new Chief of Human Resources Office in the Division of Human Resources. And attending tonight is his wife, Shakira Cummings McCall. Mr. McCall II, he brings a little over nine years of service in Baltimore County. Previously, he served as the director of office in the Office of Staffing, personnel officer in the Office of Staffing, and previous experience in Prince George's County Public Schools, Bowie State University, and the Community College of Baltimore County. Congratulations, Homer McCall. <laughs> Next, we have Elizabeth P. Perlack as the new assistant principal at Grange Elementary School, and attending with her is her husband, Daniel Perlack. Congratulations. <laughs> she brings four years of service in Baltimore County. Previously, she was the staff development teacher at Shady Spring Elementary School, reading teacher and stat teacher at Parkville Middle School, and she has previous experience at Anne Arundel County Public Schools. Congratulations, Ms. Perlack. Next, we have Tammy L. Rudolph as the assistant new assistant principal at Overly High School. And joining her is her husband, Scott Rudolph. <laughs> she brings over 20 years of service in Baltimore County Public Schools. Previously, she was a resource teacher at Overly High School. She also served as a supervisor in the Office of Mathematics, mathematics teacher at Dundalk High School. Chesapeake High School, Patapsco High School, Kenwood High School, and she has previous experience at Cecil County Public Schools. Congratulations, Ms. Rudolph. <laughs> Next, we have Malik Soyas, who is watching virtually as our new senior community facilitator in the Office of Title I, Homeless Programs and Community Services. He brings over a little over a year of service in Baltimore County. Previously, he was the community school facilitator at Berkshire Elementary, and he brings previous experience at Baltimore Collegiate School for Boys, KIPP Baltimore, Brooklyn Ascend Middle School, Civic Leadership Academy High School. So congratulations, Malik Solis, watching virtually. And also watching virtually 
is Chelsea R. Watson as the new specialist in the office of Title I. Uh, she brings over six years of experience in Baltimore County. Previously, she was an elementary classroom teacher at Randallstown Ele Elementary Special Education Inclusion Owings Mill High School, and she has served as assistant principal at Patapsco High School, special ed inclusion at Owings Mill High School, and prior experience at Baltimore in Baltimore City Public Schools and Goucher College. Congratulations, Ms. Watson. That concludes all of our appointments. Okay, thank you, and congratulations to everyone. For those who were appointed, if you want, would like to exit at this time, <laughs> it is okay for you to exit at this time. <laughs> okay. And while that is taking place, the next item on the agenda is the new superintendent contract. Do I have a motion to approve the new superintendent's contract for 2023 through 2027? So move, Pumphrey. Thank Second, Savoy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Jaminowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Then, whoops. Our next item is public comment. This is one of the opportunities the board provides to hear the views and receive the advice of community members. The members of the board appreciate hearing from interested citizens. As appropriate, we will refer your concerns to the superintendent for follow-up by staff. Online registration was open to the public one week prior to tonight's board meeting and closed at 3 o'clock p.m. Yesterday, for anyone wishing to speak at this evening's meeting, board practice limits to 10 the number of speakers at a regularly scheduled board meeting. Speakers are selected randomly using electronic selection process from all registrations received within the designated time frame. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to address the board. No speaker substitutions will be allowed. For those who are not selected through the online registration, a wait list sign-up sheet was available 30 minutes prior to the meeting. If a registered speaker is absent, speaker slots will be reassigned from the wait list so that the 10 speaker slots are allocated. In accordance with recommendations from the Baltimore County Police Department's Homeland Security Unit and the Office of School Safety, we've implemented the following safety and security protocols to enhance the safety of all attendees. Participants should be seated in the room during meetings. Individuals who need to stand should go out into the hallway to do so. Participants should not approach the table unless called upon to speak and should not approach the diet, dais. While we appreciate the creativity many have shown during their presentations, materials brought to the table are limited to electronic devices, presentation papers, and posters no larger than 11 by 14 inches. Other items should be left in your seats. Information to be given to the board is to be handed to the staff member who is seated in the front area of the meeting space. Information for other participants is to be left on the designated table outside in the hall. In the event of an emergency that requires an emergency response, such as lockout, Lockout, lockdown, or evacuation staff from the Office of Safety, School Safety will direct participants. If evacuating participants will exit through the rear or front door in an orderly manner, leave the building and cross over to the parking lot or other safe distance as warranted. While we encourage public input on policy programs and practices within the purview of this board and this school system, this is not the proper forum to address specific student or employee matters or to comment on matters that do not relate to public education in Baltimore County. We encourage everyone to utilize existing dispute resolution processes as appropriate. I remind everyone that in appropriate personnel remarks or other behavior that disrupts or interferes with the conduct of this meeting are out of order. Persons using language that is threatening or promotes violence against a BCPS employee are subject to legal penalties. Persons who otherwise disrupt or disturb this meeting will not be allowed to continue their remarks and will be escorted from the meeting. I ask speakers to observe the three minute clock, which will let you know when your time is up. Please conclude your remarks when you hear the tone or see that time has expired. The microphone will be turned off at the end of your time, and it could be turned off if a speaker addresses specific student or employee matters or is commenting on matters not related 
to public education in Baltimore County. If not selected, the public may submit their comments to the board members via email at boe at bcps.org. More information is provided on the board's website at bcps.org under Board of Education participation by the public. It is the practice of this board to allow elected officials to provide their comments to the board. First to speak is Delegate Cheryl Pastor. Welcome and thank you for your citations for our um, superintendent and board member. Well, thank you. You know I wouldn't miss this <laughs> from Roa and Dr. Williams. I began by saying it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epic of belief, it was the epic of incredulity. It was the season of light, it was the season of darkness, it was the spring of hope. From a tale of two cities, Dr. Williams, it is my pleasure and my sadness tonight. Tale of two emotions. Dr. Williams, you have experienced it all. Now, I purposefully stopped after Spring of Hope because we have watched you weather all of the above and still stand. You chose to rise above the negativity and begin your new chapter, leaving behind a legacy which includes new schools, and you said it, or I think um, uh, Mrs. Harvey said it actually, opportunities for students interested in career technology. I thank you. It's been through three superintendents, no, four superintendents, and three county executives that I, along with Arnold Potler, may he rest in peace, have advocated for this. Thank you for making this happen for all of our children all over the county. You've given us new approaches to learning Albeit scores are not where we want them to be, but you leave behind a road map for success. You weathered a pandemic, ransomware, and the aftermath of both. You leave giving us a future filled with hope and promise. Thank you. You leave us with the wisdom and the light that Dickens saw, hope and light that only a man who cares about children could possibly leave. Thank you. For too long, Baltimore County Public Schools has been a tale of two systems. You leave having worked to forge only one system. So, I'm going to take this moment to thank the board and Dr. Yarbrough for supporting Dr. Williams' vision by supporting our neediest schools, ensuring that the staff at these schools are fairly recognized and compensated for lifting those students to that new height to the mark of excellence which you have brought to this system. Dr. Williams, you leave us with so many new hires who can now, with the support of the board, turn this spring of hope into a summer of transition and then a winter of success for all of our students, all of our students. Dr. Williams, I wish you well. I wish you Godspeed. And I wish that you continue in his name to carry the light that he has put in your spirit.
Thank you, Delegate. I now call on our advisory and stakeholder group leaders to speak. Our first speaker is Billy Burke, representing Case. Good evening. Good evening, Chairwoman Mrs. Lichter, Vice Chairwoman Mrs. Harvey, Superintendent Dr. Williams, and members of the board. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you on behalf of CASE. I would like to take a moment and celebrate the members of CASE. You have led schools, families, and students through another challenging and successful year. It is time to rest, rejuvenate, and find what inspires you. Summer school and the start of the new school year will be here before you know it. Dr. Williams, on behalf of CASE, thank you for your service to Baltimore County. Dr. Yarborough, congratulations on your appointment. CASE looks forward to continuing meaningful collaboration. As we move forward, I would like to make the following recommendations. As MOUs are created with each of the five bargaining units, each bargaining unit should review the MOU for impact to its members. MOU should remain in draft form until a collaboratively designed implementation plan is in place that focuses on the unit that must implement the decision. A work group of end users must provide feedback on the decision before the MOU goes into effect. This process would ensure balance when attempting to improve working conditions. My second recommendation is aligned to the budget process. This year to balance the budget, a number of positions needed to be eliminated. CASE would recommend that the actual positions be listed and the people in the position be notified as the budget is introduced. This would give the employees time to be placed in parallel positions when available as indicated in the master agreement or change their declarations of intent and or look for another position within BCPS during the priority transfer process. It's hard to tell staff their position is eliminated. I get it. We hope that things will change and that they can stay, but we need to avoid delaying telling people their positions are eliminated to give them maximum opportunity. Finally, CASE is recommending that BCPS continue to improve its Grow Your Own Leadership programs. There is so much talent, years of experience, and dedication to BCPS within the organization. Let's capitalize on that commitment. I'd like to end by thanking the board and BCPS leadership for securing the step increase and COLA during negotiations. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of CASE. Happy Pride, everyone. Thank you. Our next speaker is Danita Tolson from NAACP of Baltimore County. Good evening. Good evening, members of the board. Dr. Williams is an extraordinary individual who I admire because of his patience and dedications to the students and the community. He's an example of when they go low, we go high. He makes me think, think of a church song, may the work that I've done speak for me. He constantly reaches out to the community and to the Baltimore County. The Baltimore County NAACP wants to present a small dedication of our appreciation for the time, effort, and energy. Our award that we want to present to you, Dr. Williams, reads, the Baltimore County branch of the NAACP presents this award to Dr. Williams in recognition of your dedicated services as superintendent to the students and the staff of the Baltimore County Public Schools and your support of AXO program from Dr. Danita Tolson and the Baltimore County branch. Thank you for all your service. And we also want to, um, we also look forward to working with Dr. Yarborough in the future. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker from the um, Area Advisory Education Council Central is Elisa Lanzo. Good evening. Good evening, Chairwoman Lichter, uh, members of the Board of Education. And um, I, I wanted to come today to 
highlight the positives of the school year. And I realized that I wanted to do that a few weeks ago as I was sitting watching my children perform in a concert. Um, and after, after walking through the school halls, admiring the artwork our students had made, um, sometimes we focus on the negatives and forget that we need to also think about our positives and how important it is that we keep it up, right? Um, and so one of those positives is um, how amazing our arts and music teachers are in creating this community for our students. I also wanted to um, give a shout out to um, all the other teachers who try to find ways to support our students in ways big and small, including the Math Counts program at Dumbarton, um, which won the regional math competition um, over a number of private schools and other schools. So, you know, we do have like a great academic achievement um, opportunities for students here. Um, finally, I, I do want to say, you know, as chair of the, of the CAEAC, I've been grateful to BCPS staff, board members, um, for preparing presentations and coming to our meetings to answer questions from members of our community. I've been grateful to our community members who have reached out to us and attended our meetings to share their concerns. In particular, we had so many members participating at our meeting about overcrowding. It was amazing. Um, Overcrowding is an issue, as you know, that impacts many other aspects of the school experience, including behavior, academic achievement, and teacher attrition, as no one benefits from insufficient planning, resulting in inadequate facilities. Finally, I'm really grateful to our student members. Congratulations to our two graduating students, Logan and Bria, and thank you to the students that we have who have asked to join us for the next school year, as well as the students who participated in our student panel meeting and who discussed with honesty and openness um, their concerns on safety, behavior, and their hopes for the leadership in BCPS. Um, we, I'm really looking forward to a new year, and if anyone who is listening is interested in joining any one of our advisory council meeting, any one of our advisory councils, um, please look at the BCPS website and search Area Education Advisory Council and reach out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lisa Dingle, representing Pocopsi. Good evening. Good evening. Board Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, and board members. My name is Lisa Dingle, President of Bacapsi. I would first like to congratulate the class of 2023. I hope that each one of you discovers the power of your voice and walks firmly in your purpose. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stated, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. I hope you saw an example of voices being lifted during the last board meeting in which the room was filled with people in support of Dr. Yarbrough as the next superintendent of schools. But Capsi was one of those voices that was lifted in the most important decision of the new board. But Capsi was in support of Dr. Yarbrough's appointment. We supported the appointment because she was the most qualified person to do the job of leading Baltimore County Public Schools. I've had an opportunity to speak with several school leaders on both the elementary and secondary school levels as well as various stakeholders and they have shared that she has been available when called upon to listen to concerns and support all stakeholders. The feedback from stakeholders has led to definitive action to better support schools. Secondary school leaders discuss concerns about the student handbook and how it currently does not address some of the more recent negative behaviors exhibited by students since the reopening of schools due to COVID. She developed a middle school and high school group of principals who have been meeting with her to discuss possible changes in the student handbook. Elementary school leaders have shared that they were able to contact her regarding concerns about the professional development schedule for principals and assistant principals. As a result, multiple stakeholders convened to discuss the concerns and an adjustment to the professional development calendar was made. Elementary school leaders also commended her for the manner in which she worked with school staff to address the complex issues of transporting our students to and from schools. 
She sought information from school leaders, analyzed the concerns, and met with stakeholders to develop solutions. This resulted in providing reliable transportation for students so they could access their educational programs. Union leaders have shared with Dr. Yarbrough that, um, that she has supported student achievement by working extensively with um, ESPBC to build the capacity of staff through planning professional development opportunities and providing a funding source to pay for the training. She has further proven her commitment to all employees and students. She was instrumental in identifying staff members who will serve as mentors in a mentoring program that will begin in the fall of 2023. She has demonstrated the ability to seek stakeholder input while creating solutions to complex issues that impact student achievement. On behalf of Bacabsi, congratulations, Dr. Yarbrough. We look forward to working in partnership next year. Dr. Williams, don't see him, but Dr. Williams, <laughs> I would like to personally thank you for your support of Bacabsi during your tenure. Thank you. And our next stakeholder speaker is Cindy Sexton from TAPCO. Good evening. Good evening, Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey. Dr. Williams is going to listen, I know, and members of the board. It's hard to believe another year is done, and I want to thank the system for negotiating with TABCO so we can increase our career earnings and make BCPS one of the highest starting salaries in the state. The work to recruit and retain our educators is ongoing, and compensation is certainly part of that work. To everyone who had a part in that, the BCPS team, the TABCO negotiating team, and our Baltimore County government partners, thank you all for your time and effort. The work continues beyond compensation, and I look forward to continuing it with Dr. Yarbrough and her team. We must be better at recruiting and retaining. Our students need and deserve it. Let's look inside and outside the box to make the paradigm shift that will make this happen. Let's find a new way, a better way, a more effective way. Let's lead the way in this work. Mrs. Hassan, I wish you all the best. Your future is surely bright. And Dr. Williams, you can tell him, uh, thank you for your service th through the unprecedented times. The UPED initiative that you started gave the union leaders space, time, and opportunity to bring concerns and solutions to the table. Uh, it has helped us work collaboratively to get the work done. Working with you and your team, Dr. Williams, helped me grow as a leader. Thank you, and I wish you the best in your future endeavors. And to all the educators, support staff, administrators, all Team BCPS, thank you for all you did for our students this year. The work is hard and it doesn't stop, but I hope everyone can take a break this summer, rest and rejuvenate, and be ready to do the work next year for our students, our staff, and our communities. Have a great summer, everyone. Thank you. Next is general public comment, and our first speaker is J.K. McDonald. Our next speaker is Lloyd Allen. Good evening. Good evening. Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, uh, members of the board, Dr. Williams, Dr. Yarbrough, thank you for your time. I'm Lloyd Allen, special educator in mathematics, he, him, uh, and uh, Happy end of year. Uh, first message is for parents. I am hoping that this is a redundant communication, but sometimes communication needs to be redundant for the message to make it home. Uh, my understanding is that BCPS stopped sending home report cards two years ago in 2021. You will not be receiving a report card in the mail. If I'm wrong, please correct me. So parents, please sit with your child. Guardian, sit with your child. Click on the word parents on the BCPS website go halfway down the page, it will say report card. You need to be sitting with your child because your student will log in so that you can see their grades. Now, an issue is that the report card is a legal document that if you go to the Maryland Vehicle Administration website is used to get your state ID and is one of the documents that is used together with another document from the school system to get your learner's permit. <laughs> so students need that document to participate in society. Uh, the job of public schools is to prepare students for college, career, and or military, but also to participate in 
and form society. Uh, our job is to replace ourselves with students. Uh, one of the items being addressed at this evening's meeting is end of year meeting is approving negotiated agreements. Please note that at least one of those agreements states that negotiations should conclude by November 30th. As educators, we need that so that we can focus on our students in winter and spring. Thank you so much. Students, educators, happy end of year. Let us come back refreshed and recharged in a month or two. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lawrence Williams. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, Superintendent Williams, members of the board and fellow Baltimore County residents. I am elated to report on Saturday, June 3rd, the Delta Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated CETA in Baltimore City held its annual Botillion Promenade at the Doubletree Hotel in Pikesville, Maryland. The Botillion is the culmination of a year-long robust rites of passage program which mentors male high school seniors in the Baltimore region. We spearhead and facilitated Saturday seminars on important topics which include fiscal responsibility, interviewing techniques, goal setting, SAT and ACT preparation, the college application process, networking, public speaking, and dining etiquette. At the end of our eight-month program, our bowls are awarded scholarships ranging from $500 to $6,000. Throughout our 20 years of consecutive mentorship, we have mentored males of Carver, Franklin, Kenwood, Lock Raven, Milford Mill, Patapsico, Owens Mills, Parkville, Pikesville, Perry Hall, Randallstown, Western Tech, and Woodlawn High Schools. During the fall of 2020, the organization contemplated pausing the program because of the pandemic. We pressed forward, delivered our sessions virtually, and ended the year strong. This success could not have happened without the help of BCPS leadership and staff aiding in recruitment and providing rem reminders of scheduled seminars and deadlines for our BOW scholars. Many of our BCPS BOW alumni have become members of our great organization, joining an incredible brotherhood which include Grammy Award winner, brother Lionel Ritchie, U.S. Senator brother Raphael Warnock, and Maryland's first African-American governor, brother Wes Moore. We want to publicly thank BCPS for partnering and producing amazing pupils. Just with the Williams administration, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated Delta Lambda Chapter looks forward to working with the Yarbrough administration as we continue to equip BCPS males with lifelong skills, all while defraying the cost of college education. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Amy Lamb. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. I am a parent with two children attending Hampton Elementary. You've heard a lot from us this year, one of whom is actually a rising middle schooler as of today. She's here with me today. I'm here to offer perspectives on overcrowding that impact my family and are of great concern to Chatterley and other Providence Road neighborhoods, as well as large swaths of Baltimore County students. In the last three years, half of the time I've been a BCPS parent, my children have been involved in three boundary adjustments. First, the Pleasant Plains Capacity Relief Study. Second, the Central and Northeast Middle School Study. And now, as a result of the, of the Pleasant Plains Study, the Hampton Elementary Emergency Relief Process. While Hampton Elementary is thrilled and thankful to see swift responses to our pleas about overcrowding, this would not be such an urgent if issue if we were more proactive and less reactive to the ongoing issue of overcrowding. It is my understanding that there will be no boundary changes at Hampton this fall. I do support this and a plan for a more comprehensive study. Overcrowding is not an accident. Its consequences are far reaching and we need to do better. I have joined forces with fellow BC BCPS parent, Robin Campbell and a group of other concerned parents, teachers and students to call attention to overcrowding and to begin to address this issue more meaningfully. This group is called Parents, Teachers, Students United, or PTSU. Robin will speak more about PTSU's policy and legislative agenda. The impact of overcrowding on students is enormous. 
According to the National School Boards Association, overcrowding can decrease students' attention to instruction and increase unwanted behavior issues. The rates of, the rates of absenteeism are likely to be higher at overcrowded schools. The National Assessment of Educational Proge Progress, NE NAEP, data support these findings. Nationwide, public school students who did not have overcrowded classrooms had significantly higher test scores in both reading and math than their peers. The most recent NAEP test scores were abysmal in Maryland, and low scores cannot be solely blamed on pandemic learning loss. According to the Maryland State Department of Education, Maryland's NAEP scores have generally been in decline since 2013 in each tested grade and subjects. That's 10 years. The impact on teachers is also enormous. Overcrowding leads to burnout, and too many teachers have chosen to abandon the profession altogether. For those who do choose to remain, they are forced to spend more time on behavior issues, which no teacher wants. Sustained stress can cause higher rates of absente absenteeism for teachers as well, which disrupts continuity for his or her classroom. Solving BCPS overcrowding requires strategic, proactive plans, not piecemeal reactionary policies that impair children's education, teacher effectiveness, and community stability. We are challenging and supporting BCPS on this issue. Thank you. Our next speaker is Robin Campbell. <laughs> Good evening. Hi, I want to begin by thanking uh, Dr. Williams for his service, uh, and I wish you all the best. Um, I'm here to speak uh, about a new organization called Parents, Teachers, Students United Against Public School Overcrowding. We call it PTSU for short, and you can learn more about it on our website, ptsu.org. Uh, six months ago, I sat in this chair and raised an alarm about severe overcrowding at Hampton Elementary School. That overcrowding was the direct outcome of a boundary study conducted to address severe overcrowding at Pleasant Plains Elementary School. And today we know that overcrowding is a problem all across the county. The Baltimore Sun reports that a third of Baltimore County public schools are operating at or over capacity. Public school overcrowding is not an accident, it is not inevitable, and it is not something we have to accept. It is instead the result of choices made by a system of leaders that includes not only members of the Board of Education and Independent, but also members of the County Council, its chairperson, and the County Executive. And all of these decision makers operate within a framework established by state level elected and administrative officials. PTSU, in short, uh, has a short but important legislative and policy agenda that can easily be impl implemented by the system of leaders before the next elections in 2024. First, we call on BCPS to publish and plan with accurate, up-to-date student count numbers, something they had been able to do in the past. Second, we call upon the county council and the county executive to implement the recommendations of the APFO task force. Every Maryland county has an adequate public facilities ordinance to pace real estate development so that government has the time to build infrastructure needed to serve it, uh, including uh, classrooms and schools. Baltimore County's existing guidelines are among the least effective in the state. Third, the county council and the county executive should revise fees on developers to help cover the costs of building new schools and classrooms. Fees in other counties raise millions of dollars every year. By comparison, over three years, our fees have yielded little more than $100,000. And finally, while we want to channel more resources to schools and classrooms, we also want to build confidence in how BCPS uses those funds. PTSU calls upon the county council and the county executive to expand the inspector general's mandate and to provide sufficient staffing so that the office can conduct independent investigations into allegations of malfeasance and ethical violations within BCPS. Over the summer, PTSU will be building its membership and adding organizations to the list of supporters on its homepage. We will be back again in the fall, expanded, empowered, and eager to be your partners in reducing school overcrowding. For more information about P Parents, Teachers, Students United Against Public School Overcrowding, visit us online at PTSU. Have a great summer. Thank you. Our next speaker is Teresa Brooklyn.
Our next speaker is Rebecca Chesner. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Rebecca Chesner, and I am a concerned citizen who is attending this school board meeting tonight to express my concern about some of the content that I understand is currently available in some of our school libraries. Unfortunately, our schools, which have been increasingly hijacked by political activism and identity politics, are in crisis right now. There is so much polarization and division going on in this country over this that we forget that the people being hurt the most here are our children. I think it is fair to say that common sense and data suggest that protecting the innocence of children throughout their childhood from topics filled with sex, drugs, and violence leads to less anxiety, less confusion, less depression, and more joy. Sadly, many of our children today are struggling academically, lack critical thinking skills, and basic knowledge of American history and civics, but are very knowledgeable about these former topics that they are bombarded with on a daily basis, whether it is social media, music, video games, movies, television, books, etc. Ironically, in the attempt to be diverse and inclusive, there is a whole large segment of the population, specifically parents, who are being disenfranchised, disrespected, and maligned simply for wanting to protect their children's innocence. Is that a crime? I think not. The particular book I will be focusing on is the book Tricks by Ellen Hopkins. Results of an online search indicate that this book contains obscene excerpts involving sexually explicit excerpts involving minors, excerpts containing explicit child rape and abuse, illegal drug use, graphic violence and profanity, underage alcohol consumption, and adult and childhood prostitution. In addition, a content warning pops up saying, you are about to access material that may contain content of an adult nature. These files may include pictures and materials that some viewers may find offensive. If you are under the age of 18, or if such material offends you, or if it is illegal for you to view these materials, please exit now. Currently, this book is available in 12 high schools in Baltimore County School Libraries. I am simply asking that sexually explicit, vulgar, and or obscene materials not be available within our public schools where parents have diminished control of what their children can access or read. I will be submitting a citizen's review of materials for this book to your chief academic officer, Mary McComas, to be reviewed by your board. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Scott Jenkins. Good evening again, Chair Lecter, um, Vice Chair Harvey, and Superintendent Williams. Thank you for your service and wish you nothing but the best for you and your family in the future. Um, you've all seen me over the last couple of months. I've been like a bad penny. I just keep turning up. I like to go with Miss, with, with Miss Hassan says, make good trouble. Sometimes it's not good what I do, but we try to get out there and get our voice heard. I just want to talk tonight. I know you're all going to vote in a little while on the boundary study. Um, I want you to know some of you were at the public meeting, some weren't. Um, my daughter, I think, said enough at the public meeting. She can speak much better than I am, so I'll let her words go there. But I just want to let you all know, for those that haven't followed this process, that a lot more went into it than just the committee and the consultants. A lot of us parents got together in February when we became concerned about how the process was going, and we started working across the spectrum of schools. I met parents from Rossville. I met parents from Red House Run. I met parents from Perry Hall Middle. I met people like Robin Campbell and Amy Lamb from Hampton. At the end of the day, Buddy Redmer from, from Gunpowder and Sos from Kingsville, we got together and we tried to work with the consultants. We gave them ideas. At times we challenged them. There's some things I probably said and wrote that I wish I wouldn't have done. I can, I'll learn from that. Um, but I think at the end of the day, we came up with a map, or they came up with a map with our help that I think works. With 55 schools and 30,000 children, it is amazing to me that there was not one person that spoke in opposition to this plan. This plan had 70% support of Map A, and then that only got higher with a few tweaks that were done to make Map E that brought in a few other planning blocks where communities had um, some concern. I was the biggest critic of Cropper. 
Um, but I will tell you, they did listen to the public, they did listen to the committee, and I think they came up with a map that works and that we can be proud of, and I think uh, pretty much everybody in that span can be happy with. Um, I'm willing to join with Robin and Amy and others. We're not gonna go away. We've learned from this. I apologize I haven't been more involved. Um, you guys have a tough job, and sometimes the council and our state legislature doesn't give you the resources that you need, but they give you the blame, and that needs to stop. They ask you to come up with miracles, like trying to redistrict 30,000 kids because they're building one more middle school when we need three. And we need to figure out a way to do that. So Mrs. Hassan, I know you love Make Good Trouble. I wish you nothing but the best in college. My favorite quote is from Bobby Kennedy, where he said, some people look at the world as it is and ask why. I dream of a world that, as it could be and ask why not. I challenge this board under the new leadership to continue asking why not, to continue fighting for our children, and I hope you'll support Matt B tonight. And I want a quick little side note, Ms. Sexton, teachers do matter. My first grader came downstairs this morning and actually was sad the school year was over because he's going to miss his first grade teacher. He's met his teacher that changed his life, and I appreciate everything TABCO does and you all do as a board. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Sharon Serhoff. Good evening. Last month, I talked about what was missing from the policies concerning promotion, retention, and graduation. These policies mean nothing if the school is so focused on graduation numbers, they neglect the most important item. Are these students prepared for graduation? If a student is reading at the sixth grade level, and performing math at the fourth grade level, are they graduation ready? If they're a student with disabilities, they can be. And this is troubling to me. If this were my student, I would ask them to, for them to be retained so that we would have a little bit more time to address their deficits. But BCPS, doesn't retain students. BCPS promotes students no matter what. If a parent protests, they are bullied, even forced, into allowing their child to be promoted, even graduate. Why do we have a policy if parent concerns are ignored and silenced? What kind of an example are we setting for our students who attend the schools if administrators and central office staff bully, threaten, and verbally abuse parents and teachers unchecked. So, how do we solve this? Instead of bullying parents, listen to their concerns and work with them to help their students close the gap. Listening to parents also means listening to their representatives if they have one. Collaborate with them to provide needed services. More is more, less is not more. Let us recognize that students learn differently. Not everybody learns the same. Graduation shouldn't be about numbers. It should be about giving our students wings to fly and be successful. This morning I had the extreme pleasure of watching a student of mine walk across a stage. She went from certificate track to getting a diploma, and all she needed was two more years. She, was tw she is 20 years old. That's what we need to see, not a child walking across the stage who is not ready. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lynn Lawings. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Board Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, Dr. Williams, and Board members. 
and guests tonight. Our children, our commitment, our concern. My name is Lynn Loings. I'm the president of the Baltimore County Chapter of the Continental Societies. I'd like to thank Dr. Williams for allowing us the opportunity to partner with the Baltimore County Public Schools. The Baltimore County Ch Chapter provides supplemental activities and supports for Baltimore County students. During the 2022-2023 program year, we partnered with the following schools in no orders, Edmond Heights, Headville Elementary, Dogwood Elementary, Featherbed, Milford Milk, Pikesville, Millbrook, Windsor Mill Middle School, and a list of activities to include. We hosted a back to school drive, which we were able to provide backpacks, school supplies to Headville and Windsor Mill Middle School. We highlighted the Say No to Drugs program, provided over 1,532 red ribbon kits to Headville, Featherbed Lane, Dogwood Elementary Schools. We donated holiday food baskets and gift cards to Millbrook Elementary and Pikesville middle students. We donated books to the libraries of Edmondson Heights, Headville, Mi Windsor Mill Middle School, highlighting African American authors. Continent Continental members participated in Headville's Elementary Career Day. We showcased different careers in the fields of podiatry, elected officials, human resources, child development, cybersecurity, and entrepreneurship. We have provided a monetary donation to the Headville After School Girls programs, the Pearls, the Crafty Kids, and the Headville Dances. We are also grateful that we had the opportunity to work with the counselor at Milford Mill Academy, Ms. Jasmine Brown, and we provided three scholarships, 1,000 for academic, 500 for a college book, and 250 for a gift card for dorm supplies. Our children, our commitment, our concern. We wish these students well as they enter the Baltimore college career. Again, 45 women members on the move. Our commitment, our children, our commitment, our concern. I'd like to also thank and congratulate Dr. Yarborough, and we look forward to working with her. Again, our children, our commitment, our concern. Thank you. Thank you. Since there were speakers, there were two speakers absent, we will now call from the public comment wait list. The first speaker is Bash Faron. Good evening. Good evening. I'm really not prepared, but I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Williams, thank you for your service. I sincerely wish you uh, great success in your next endeavor, wherever that would be. Um, good evening to all. I want to talk to you a little bit about my experience in the calendar committee since 1995 where I was appointed by Dr. Berger and every superintendent after that. The opinions of the calendar committee are opinions. No facts, opinions. The vast majority of the membership are school employees. The attendance by the EX is minimal. Two, maybe one, and the participation is minimal on the part of the EX. So whichever vote really was done, obviously it really reflects the membership. But really the calendar should be educational to the student and should reflect the parents and the taxpayer, whether they have children or not. For me, what the problem is that before the meeting, the first meeting, you know, the two Muslim holidays were included as they were included in the previous year. Then suddenly they were pulled out. A reminder of really what I struggled with with Dr. Berger and Dr. Hirston for a long, long time where our community always gets the short end of the sticks. And then 
miraculously one is added. I always pride myself about equity and equality, and every official that comes here in the board and outside the board talks about it. Equality is easy. Zero equals zero, one equals one, two equals two. That's equality. Equity means if there is disservice or inequality in the past, that means the people who have been mistreated, which is the Muslim community in the county, they should be given a better treatment, a more treatment. So in my first 22 years in the school system, it's always one faith holiday is recognized. All others were looking and watching despite you know, a lot of appeals. Now, in basically what happened in the candidate committee. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lisa Dingle. You, would, not you? Okay, that's fine. The next speaker will be Dr. Naomi Hill. Sherry, okay, Ni Dr. Naomi Hill. Okay, Aliso Magos. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I will be translating for her, if okay. that's okay with you. Sure. Buenas noches, miembros de la Junta. Mi nombre es Lucía Islas, soy una voluntaria de Chispas, Maryland, y lo que es más importante, soy una madre preocupada de un alumno del condado de Baltimore de octavo grado. Me Good afternoon, members of the board. My name is Lucía Islas. I am a volunteer with Chispa, Maryland, and most importantly, I am a, ma a concerned mother of her eighth grader uh, Baltimore uh, County student. Me preocupo mucho por la salud de mi hijo y su desempeño de la escuela. Es por eso que estoy aquí hoy para incitarlos a que hagan todo lo posible para asegurarse de que el condado de Baltimore pase los autobuses escolares de diesel a autobuses escolares eléctricos y limpios. I care very much about my son's health and his <coughs> performance in school. That's why I'm here today, to urge you to do all that, all that you can to make sure that Baltimore County moves from diesel school buses to clean electric school buses. Sabían que los autobuses escolares de diesel emiten contaminantes peligrosos que agravan el asma y otros problemas? ¿Y sabía que la contaminación por diesel también se ha relacionado con puntajes más bajos en las pruebas y un peor rendimiento académico? Do you know that diesel school buses admit dangers, pollutants, and aggravate asthma and other problems? And do you know that diesel pollution has, has also been linked to lower test scores and worse academic performance? De hecho, un niño que viaja en un autobús escolar de diesel puede estar expuesto a un nivel de gases de escape, tóxicos 15 veces mayor que el de alguien que viaja en un automóvil, para los niños de color que tienen más probabilidades de tener asma que sus compañeros blancos. Viajar en autobús escolares de diesel es especialmente dañino. In fact, a child riding in a diesel school bus may be exposed to 15 times the level of toxic diesel exhausted as some, someone riding in a car. For black and Latino children who are more likely to have asthma than, than their white peers, riding in diesel school buses is especially harmful. Hay nuevas oportunidades de financiamiento como el programa de autobuses escolares limpios y el programa piloto de autobuses escolares eléctricos, que pueden ayudar al condado de Baltimore a hacer la transición hacia autobuses más limpios. Les pido que aprovechen todas estas oportunidades de financiamiento y se comprometan a hacer la transición de su flota de autobuses escolares a autobuses eléctricos limpios. En nombre de todos los niños del condado de Baltimore, gracias por su tiempo. There are new there are new funding opportunities such as the Clean School Bus Program and the Electric School Bus Pilot Program that can help Baltimore County trans transition to clean buses. Please take advantage of, the, of all these funding opportunities 
and please commit to transmitting your. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next is public comment on board policies. And our first speaker for policy 5000 is Lloyd Allen. Good evening. Good evening again, Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, Dr. Williams, members of the board, thank you for your time again. Um, as an educator, uh, I have to note that students are, uh, the job of a public school system is to serve students. And it is an interesting choice to remove a policy, making firm statements, declaring measurable commitments to students. Whoops, keep going. Sorry about you, that. You, no, it's not you. I'm Go obviously ahead. distracted. So <laughs> one, once more with feeling. Uh, the policy analysis states that these are redundant statements. Good. We're a school system. We should be making redundant statements saying that we serve students, and they should be measurable. Uh, however, some of the stated redundancies don't quite match. Uh, students will be taught by highly qualified educators as in the existing policy. I am a highly qualified educator because I am certified in the areas of special education and mathematics. Um, that's not the same as we'll set high performance standards and expect all employ employees and students to strive to be the best they can be. That is something that we should do, but it is squishy and not measurable. Uh, when through a mistaken paperwork and communication, I taught US history during the pandemic, I was not highly qualified. I did it. I took one for the team to help students, but I was not highly qualified during that semester. When you have me teach Algebra 2, when you have me teach Calculus, then I'm highly qualified. So I'm not sure that all of these statements are as redundant as the policy analysis states they are. Thank you. Thank first, you. Students first. Thanks. Our next speaker for Policy 5000 is Bash Farone. Good evening. Line 15 and 16 says all students will reach high standards as established by BCPS and the state, etc. I am concerned that our students will be facing graduates from China and India and the Middle East. So to my knowledge and my readings, the state standards are really bare minimum. I basically ask you to go a little bit higher than that. Line 21, all students will be taught by highly qualified teachers. My concern is that we may need to think and replace highly qualified by highly effective teachers. Line 26, all students will graduate from high school. My concern is about the word all. I always really heard from so many people and really during my kids when in school that everybody graduates. So if everybody graduates, then it is really social promotion. Graduating students despite failure to meet the grades, I don't believe is a rational policy, personally. I request that the policy will clarify the standards of graduation and really to have a lens to compare us with the graduates from China, from India, Middle East, and you know, Western Europe, because that's really how our kids will be facing in the future. Last but not least, there is one grammar uh, error there. I leave it to you to check it out. And I'm finishing early. Thank you. You can stay there and move on to policy 5330. Policy 5330 is about student engagement. Line 12 says the board recognizes that student engagement 
and the educational and decision-making process is a key component, et cetera. My concern is that the policy does not have the parents and the guardians in it in addition to the students. Furthermore, there is not a recognized effective method to gather and tabulate the student's input. I personally don't think the student member of the board can um, uh, really canvass 110,000 students in our county, east, west, north, south, effectively. And I don't really think that there is enough funding for that. So I ask you to consider that. Next item is line 17, the board encourages student engagement in development of programs, policies, budget, and academic program. So I'm really pleased that our student member of the board has been a leader in that. But my concern is that there is no, um, I, I don't know where the, the hours would be. For a student member of the board or all active students, there is no enough time to learn, to study, and also to canvass the opinions of all students and also, in the same time, grasp the complexities of the budget process, for instance. Okay, I have myself three boards under my belt. So, you know, critical care, surgery, wound care, nutrition, etc. And I have been here for a long time. The budget is really complex and not really easy to grasp. So. For whatever it's worth, I, I, I see a defect in that. Line number 2122. The board supports student engagement, community, and civic group. The concern is also uh, similar in nature. Line 29 about primary method of communication, engagement of student, etc. My concern is that there is no financial and team logistic to support the student member of the board to cover the 110,000 students. I, I don't know if that's really at all possible. Um, and that's it for this policy. Thank you. Our next speaker for that policy, um, 5330, is Lawrence Williams. Okay. All right. Dr. Ferron, since you're sitting there, policy 6002. Policy 6002 is about instructions. Line 7 and 8 says the board is responsible for the selection and purchase of instructional material. Of course. My concern is about the adjective. I do recommend adding the word effective instructional material, effective instructional material. Line 39, page one, and line one, page two. Purchase of instructional materials shall be based on the lowest price, consistent with, etc. My concern is the way it's phrased, it really focus on the price. Okay, and if you focus on the price, I think there would be a problem, even though the words that come after that, I believe they are weak and rubbery in nature. I recommend that we focus on quality and effectiveness of the material. Page number two, line number nine to 15, ensure educational equity. The school system required that equity lends be used in the review. Equity lens be used in the review. And my concern is that there is no clear definition, I know, for the word equity lens. The sentence may be used, for instance, to brainwash certain students to a certain lifestyle that is objectionable to some parents based on moral or religious or ethnic 
or personal views. My suggestion is that we define clearly what is an equity lens. And this policy does not have an opt-out option. I think it's important for the school system when it's dealing with controversial issues to allow parents clearly by policy to opt out. Page number two, line 36 and 37, establish guidelines to evaluate and document effectiveness of the instructional material. I do I really appreciate the use of the word effectiveness, which is what I related for before. So I, I recommend that you use that throughout not only just this policy, but also other policies. What count is the effectiveness towards the students? That's the end of my comment about this policy. Thank you. Our next speaker for policy 6002 is, we've got other speakers for that policy, is Sharon Serhoff. Yes. We have two more speakers for that same policy. Oh. Okay. Get out? Or, yes. Or yes. Sit next Go back to it. To pick a seat. <laughs> Any seat. <laughs> Ms. Serhoff? Okay, that's fine. Um, same policy, 6002, Anna Weisberg. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Chairwoman Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, uh, members of the board. I am uh, Anna Weisberg, reading teacher at Deep Creek Magnet Middle School. And um, I just wanted to first say that I really appreciated your follow through on the public works recommendations. Um, I greatly appreciate the focus on equity. A couple uh, things that stood out for me were the uh, phrases reflective of all students, equitable access and equity lens. I just, um, I'm just deeply appreciative, thank you. Um, I did wonder if it could be further strengthened by adding language that recognizes the importance of including um, teacher input, educator input and student input in terms of the efficacy of our pilots and evaluating the efficacy of the curriculum. Thank you. Thank you. Our next policy is 8315. Our first speaker is Sharon Serhoff. This one is participation by the public, policy 8315. I initially said I wasn't going to speak on this, but That's I'm, fine. I'm okay. going to speak on it anyway. Um, I read the uh, policy, and what comes to mind is I felt like the board didn't want to hear from the public. Um, and I hopefully I'm wrong. This year, what I like about the what we have been doing is we have the opportunity for people to sign up online, um, which affords a person like myself who's all over the place to be able to sign up. Um, I didn't see that anymore in, in the new policy, at least what I was able to print out. Um, I like the idea that we can get on a waiting list that needs to be kept. Um, the policy also needs to state that we have the opportunity to either be in person or virtual. The state does that and it allows people like myself to, if I'm not feeling up to driving here, at least I'll be able to still speak. Um, so thank you. That's, that's what I have to say about it. Okay, thank you. Same policy, next speaker is Dr. Dorsey. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Can I move this closer? So the number of students receiving special education services accounts for about 14.1% of the total enrollment compared to a statewide average of 
14.1% of 111,084 is 15,663. That is 15,663 students receiving special education services based on those that have at least been assessed. While not every student is at grade level to have their accommodations to be sent and approved to college board. Excuse me one second. Are you talking towards policy 8315? I'm not sure what that is, but I know okay. that I, I, I actually signed up for the public part. I don't know how to end up under that policy. I don't know, but this is just um, speakers for the policy. Okay, so I so won't be able to. No, thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. You can That's unfortunate, sign up again. But thank you. Okay. <laughs> you can submit your comments. Um, you can give your comments to staff, and they will circulate them to us. Thank you. For policy 8315, same policy, participation by public, Anna Weisberg. No, thank you. Next person, same policy, Lloyd Allen. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Lloyd Allen, special educator in mathematics, he, him. Thank you for the opportunity to speak, Chair Lecter, Vice Chair Harvey, Dr. Williams, members of the board. Um, Addressing the chair as remarks are always addressed to the chair. I initially had some concerns that were shared earlier. After reading the policy about four or five times, I think I'm starting to wrap my mind around it and am more comfortable. The two pieces of input that I have are that the efforts to make things more fair by using a systematic fashion to have engagement might still be able to be gamed and that sometimes randomness is more fair. Along those lines, the policy says that the first student to sign up will be chosen as the student stakeholder within the students and citizens slot. I don't want my students to be on their cell phones during class. I would prefer for that to be a random student from the people who identify themselves as students when they sign up so that they are not jamming on their phone at nine o'clock in the morning, Tuesday before the meeting. Uh, last piece uh, is I don't know if there might be another way to elevate students. Super important that we keep students central. I wonder whether a single student slot might be above the citizen slot or maybe first, because students are why we are here. Have a great summer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next speaker for 8315 is Cindy Sexton. Okay, thank you. Um, Dr. Frone, 8315. For eight, policy 8315. There is a time to praise and there is a time not to praise. I really don't like this policy. And I ask you to return it to the drawing board. I'm really concerned that this policy relies mainly on the bargaining units and the so-called EX and PTA. Less reliance on parents and taxpayers who pay taxes that make the system run. Bargaining units needs, in my opinion, sorry, Cindy, needs, in my opinion, <laughs> to bargain in closed doors. We hear the same thing all the time. Retain teachers, more money, etc. They always ask for similar things. The EX rarely come. Only one person came today, for instance. So this wording, especially the item that talks about restricting public speakers if they came two times in a row or something like that, I really think that's really completely against what the board always asks for engagement of the public. I think you need to see why the public doesn't come more often and correct the problem and not really restri restrict the public speakers uh, if they come more than one or two times in a row. In that, I want to say something about cutting the microphone off. 
I did that 20 years ago. I, I really think it's just really inappropriate. I know why it's being done. But cutting the microphone off is not really pleasant, all right? And I don't think we really need it. We need to encourage the public to come in. So I pay about 12000 a year to the county government, actually more than that, all right? If I cannot have three minutes every meeting, you know, why am I paying all that money for the school system? I bet you private schools don't really treat public speakers in the same way. I don't believe they cut off microphone. I think they encourage um, input. I think they answer their email, which we really don't. So, you know, this policy doesn't really address the core problem why parents are not really engaged in the system. And I, I think it's just really not a good policy. And I'm really sorry for saying it. I will praise you for some other policies, but I don't like this one. Okay, you can stay there. The next policy um, for your comment is 8400, Office of Internal Audit. Dr. Bashfaron really likes this policy. <laughs> Kudos to the chair and the members and law office. So I find this policy is unusually detailed policy in relation to many other policies, okay? It's a pattern. Most policies are vague, brief, general. They can be interpreted different way, give leeway. This one is really done by a very smart lawyer. And I really like it, actually. So the question is, why was it made so detailed? There must be a reason for it. I like to know. People like to know. And why the other policies, many of them, not all of them, are so brief and not really specific and can be interpreted in different ways. So again, I really truly compliment PRC for this policy. I honestly enjoyed it. Something wrong with me to enjoy reading something like this, but I really liked it, and I thank you for that. Thank you. Moving on to 8410, um, Dr. Frone, reporting fraud, waste, abuse, or unlawful act. 8410, about abuse, waste, and unlawful behavior. I really like this policy again. It's really a similar in nature. I read it, and there is a great effort in phrasing it, in making it, making it encompassing, um, being clear. Again, I, I just really thank you for uh, uh, this policy. I have the same uh, question that uh, it gives me impression that there is a lot of waste and abuse in the system. I don't know if that's really true, but I wonder really why this policy is made so detailed in nature. Uh, maybe someone can address that um, to me. Okay, thank you. Policy 8420, Dr. Frone, anti-retaliation. Anti-retaliation, this is another kudos for PRC and all the people involved with it and the law office. I think it's really just well written. Um, again, something wrong with me that I truly enjoyed reading it, so I thank you for it. Okay. And the last policy for your comments are 8430, the Audit Committee. And the same thing, copy of my <laughs> previous remarks. I truly like this policy. Kudos to the PRC and the law office. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Can I save the rest of the time, please, for next time? I mean, we, I we don't accrue early. time, but thank you for suggesting it. The next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report, and for that I call on Dr. Williams. So good evening, everyone. We have a video uh, to share with the board and the community. So at this time. Congratulations, Team BCPS. We've made it. 
we've reached the end of the 2022-2023 school year. And I wanna thank you, our students, teachers, administrators, support staff, parents, and families for all you've done to help us cross the finish line. There's so much to celebrate as I visited schools across the county this school year and spoke with staff and students, I saw high levels of student engagement and staff working relentlessly to improve and accelerate student learning. Our students participated in a range of extracurricular and civic programs, athletics, and clubs, and both students and staff won numerous local, state, and national awards for their incredible talent contributions, and accomplishments. And speaking of accomplishments, over the past few weeks, we have awarded diplomas to thousands of students. Our graduates beamed with pride as they walk across the stage with a diploma fully equipped with the resources, knowledge, and support needed to thrive in the future and successfully pursue a wide range of opportunities, including post-secondary education, the military, or careers. I feel a special kinship with the class of 2023 because their high school journey from 2019 to 2023 parallels my own tenure as BCPS superintendent, which will come to an end on June 30th. Together, we weathered a once in a lifetime global COVID pandemic and a crippling cybersecurity attack. The challenges we face spurred innovation and greater collaboration across Team BCPS. We became adept at pivoting and adjusting to meet the growing needs of our students and staff. Like our graduating seniors, I have spent the last four years working hard to achieve my goals and along the way, having truly unforgettable experiences. I'm very proud of the work we have done together to raise the bar, close gaps, and prepare our students for the future. Let's take a look at some of our accomplishments over the past four years that are aligned with the five priority areas of our strategic plan, the Compass. Learning, accountability, and results. We have lengthened student days to provide additional time for learning, as well as expanded our academic resources and supports to students during the school day after school, on Saturdays, and through our summer programs. Invested additional funding in career and technical education programs. Currently, 51.5% of BCPS high school students take CTE courses, which is the largest percentage of school systems in the state, made significant gains in advanced placement exam participation and performance, expanded access to dual enrollment and tuition-free programs at CCBC for all BCPS high school students and created the Black Boy Joy and Genius Initiative for middle school boys to improve the educational experiences and outcomes for black boys in BCPS. Safe and supportive environment. We have prioritized social emotional well-being by including funding for additional school counselors and social workers. Launched a new program that plays safety assistance in all secondary schools elevated the importance of student leadership and voice to tackle safety concerns by working with student leaders from Baltimore County Student Councils and Junior Councils to launch peer-to-peer -peer safety campaigns and expanded training for BCPS staff on de-escalation strategies. High-performing workforce and alignment of human capital. We have created enhanced compensation packages for employees and provided recruitment and retention bonuses for all BCPS employees. Launched a comprehensive system-wide plan to improve staff climate and morale. Supported employee wellness by advocating for additional time off for staff to rest and recharge. And improved collaboration with association leadership to ensure consistent, clear communication on initiatives to support the needs of Team BCPS community engagement and partnerships. We have grown BCPS business and community partnerships with more than 800 partners serving the system to date. Enhanced parent volunteer opportunities to support the schoolhouse. Hosted several town halls, community conversations, and in-person system meetings to build relationships, answer community questions and concerns, and brainstorm solutions. 
and expanded outreach to multilingual families and secured additional resources and partnerships to support the needs of our growing ESOL population. Operational excellence. We have implemented more than 150 efficiency review recommendations, developed multi-year improvement plans for all schools, opened a customer service center that provides BCPS employees and retirees with assistance and solutions to a range of questions, and overhauled and reimagined operations to improve efficiencies in transportation. These examples are just a snapshot of what we have accomplished working together in support of our 111,000 plus students. I am grateful for Team BCPS teachers and staff who thrive to provide our students with a world-class education, for our students whose unique lived experiences inspire and encourage me, and for our families and communities that partner with us to ensure our students can meet their highest potential. I'm proud of our school administrators who continue to lead their schools as instructional leaders and work diligently to address the academic and social emotional needs of our students. I deeply appreciate the efforts of our support staff who are often the first and last faces our students see and who work behind the scenes to create optimal environments for teaching and learning. It has been an honor to serve as your superintendent. I wish every member of Team BCPS the very best and I know that BCPS is well poised to make progress towards eliminating disparities in academic achievement and will advance equity and excellence for all students. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Thank you. We can cut. <laughs> Um, next on the agenda is the chair report. Um, so today was an exciting day for BCPS students and staff as they celebrated the last day of the 22-23 school year. Having served as a principal for many years, I remember the excitement and how happy students and staff were to participate in end of the year activities to celebrate their accomplishments of the year. So congratulations to our students, our staff and families on the successful completion of the school year. It was an honor to join Dr. Williams, members of his cabinet, central and um, school administrators, and elected officials at our recent graduation ceremonies. It was wonderful to attend and witness the excitement of our students, their families, and our staff. I was inspired by the remarks from the class of 2023 and loved listening to the pride in our principal's voices and seeing the sheer joy on families' faces. Thank you to Trish Mustafer and Kim Ferguson and their staffs for all of their hard work to ensure a successful graduation ceremony season. We've had a very, we had a very exciting board meeting last month as we announced Dr. Miriam Yarbrough as our next superintendent of BCPS. Eight community meet and greets are planned beginning this Thursday. I encourage the BCPS community to attend a meet and greet and learn more about Dr. Yarbrough and her leadership priorities hear from members, um, as she hears from members of the BCPS community and answers questions. I'd also like to thank Dr. Williams for ensuring a smooth and productive transition in leadership. The Board of Education wishes everyone a happy, healthy, and restful summer as we look forward to connecting with Team BCPS community throughout the summer. And next on the agenda is Ms. Hassan's last um, student board member report. You guys, don't say it like that. I might start crying again. <laughs> True. I'm kidding. Um, hopefully. <laughs> Um, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, Madam Chair. And for the last time as student member, good evening, everybody. It's an honor to be here today with all of you. And for this past year, I cannot express to you the amount of love and pride I've had just to be in this chair for one last time. Before I reflect on this past year, I want to share with you all my journey in Baltimore County Public Schools as it recently came to a close. Um, but I began my educational journey at Fifth District Elementary School, continued at Warren Elementary School, um, Sparks Elementary School, Hereford Middle School, and completed my education at Prairie Hall High School. Um, at Hereford Middle School, under the leadership of Mrs. Delone, I distinctly remember finding the power of my voice. In seventh grade, like many students of color in BCPS, I began to experience incidents of racism. As I spoke out about my experiences and the experiences of my peers, I began to understand the importance and necessity of the student voice. Within the next few months, and still today, Hereford Middle School would develop a campaign of belonging. 
I didn't know what I was doing in any capacity, but I understood the sense of belonging and power in my voice and others in just being heard. As I met student member of the board, Halima Adekoya, I knew that I wanted to follow in her footsteps and in student leaders such as hers. Come freshman year, like every freshman in high school, I began over eager to overcome the battle that was high school. In three months time, I'd experienced immense mental health struggles and with the COVID-19 pandemic, you can piece together why I'm so passionate about mental health. As we gradually came back, we found balance and we renewed our passions. In the summer of 2020, I began my work as an organizer and I'd like to think that no matter where I go, I hope to still emulate that young advocate. As I advocated for justice and encouraged young people to get involved, I knew that I wanted to put my action where my passion is. Come the next year, I applied for student member and stopped at the interview process. And the year after that, with even more tenacity and passion and mentorship of new lifelong friend and my predecessor, Christian Thomas, I ran again. And you can see what happened next. Um, but Christian Thomas taught me an immense amount about a fight for what you believe in a type of selflessness that does not allow one to ever lose themselves. Christian is the best friend and mentor I could have asked for because he showed me what leading with love is. He taught me that love is kind, love is gentle, and love encourages one to become the best version of, him, of themselves. For communities such as this one, you show love a little differently because you encourage your people to become the best version of themselves. And that love does not always have to be gentle, but it must always be kind and empathetic. And that is how I choose to lead. As I ran for student member of the board, I engaged with 13,000 student voters, holding the record for student voters in BCPS. And while I'm incredibly lucky to have reached that benchmark, we will not tolerate anything less than intentional efforts to increase engagement with our young people. Around 50,000 secondary students are eligible to vote for our student member, and I cannot stress the importance of student engagement as it directly engages them with our democratic systems, their representative, and the youngest elected position in the county. Over the tumultuous campaign process, I must stress the amazing feat it is to hold this position and how proud I am of my successor, Kayla Drummond, who I wish absolutely nothing but the best for, because that girl will ensure that you are constantly thinking about students, that you are constantly thinking about the realities of our experiences, and most importantly, that you remember to lead with love. While I reflect on this year, I encourage you all to remember our students. I entered this position because I wanted to represent the student voice, to acknowledge the gaps and inequities of our system, and fight for our students. Board members, every single one of you shares the same exact goal, to support our students, to give them the best we can offer, and to understand that we must raise the bar for what it means to succeed. We must always acknowledge the fact that as hard as we work, there will always be an endless amount of work to do until we have opportunities for every single student, until we meet every student where we are, until we acknowledge the gaps between this space and our schoolhouses, we have an endless amount of work to do. And I expect you all to continue fighting for our students unconditionally. I expect you all to challenge your own thinking and strengthen our community with love and empathy. As the 42nd BCPS student member of the board, I'm honored to have represented 111,000 students. I've held voting rights on many, many issues, excluding the budget, but I'm also honored to have served as the chair of the Legislative Committee this past year and secure budgetary voting rights for our next student member with necessary training for every single board member offered to you all, but especially for our student member as she engages with the budget and most importantly engages in our system. I visited every single middle and high school in the county, as well as some elementary schools, um, and. Through that, I met the most incredible students that I hope all of you have the privilege of engaging with because they truly remind me every day why I do what I do and why you do what you do because those students will truly change the world one day. And they're changing the world right now as we see it. So through that, ooh, um, as we secured voting rights and visited all of these schools, and we m I must stress the importance of also the work that we put in right here on this dais. On this dais, I passed Mental Health Resolution 2023-01, which ensures that we're constantly talking about mental health as a key component of our success, and most importantly, making sure that students have access to their communities. So for me, it was essential to get the work started, and I'm sure some of you get a, a glimpse as to why. Um, but I also want to acknowledge how today I want to 
fight for my position one last time, as there were remarks um, regarding my position and, and regarding the position of the student member in regards to the student engagement policy. So I was in, I was in the room as we, as we honed in on, on rewriting that and reworking that policy and, and making sure that it was um, accessible for our students. But so that policy um, especially focuses on extracurricular activities, student engagement, and making sure that students are actively part of our system. Our student members represent 111,000 students, and I acknowledge I don't see every, every 111,000 student today, um, but I have met with focus groups from every single school, every single secondary school in Baltimore County Public Schools. Um, most importantly, our students do not serve as the direct voice of 100, each 111,000 students, but rather as a representative of them all. So our student member um, speaks from their experience, speak from, speaks from their peers' exper experience, and most importantly, speaks from the collective experience from what they've learned. They have put in the work, I have put in the work, to understand the nuance and the discrepancy of each of our students. I, in my high school year, um, I do want to um, sort of comment on the fact of, of workload because I want to make sure that everybody knows going in um, the, you know, the power of the student member and how, um, how important it is that we, we do advocate for them. Um, our student members have graduated top 10% of their class each year, almost each year, um, and they have not only proven their academic success, frankly, they have proven their success on this day is, and that is the most important part. Um, I'm, I'm very, I think it's very important that we discuss the importance of our student voice in such a way that doesn't, you know, diminish them as, you know, as, as only a young person, because these people are young people with power, and they're young people who are passionate about making our school systems a better place. Um, and I'm incredibly excited for the future of our student members, but also for the future of our students, because we are your students. So if you have any faith in, in our students, I hope you have faith in my successors. Um, from this point on, though, I do want to switch to a later, a later topic and share that I, I did graduate from Perry Hall High School um, about two weeks ago. So um, I now have my high school diploma from Baltimore County. I'm now a BCPS alumni. It is an incredibly bittersweet moment, um, but I'm honored to become, a, um, become part of a system of BCPS alumni that does so much good. Um, so I also want to take a moment to thank my mentors, to thank you guys all on the board. Um, I might cry during Right, guys, it might, this might be what does it for me. Um, but thank you, Chair Lichter. Thank you, Vice Chair Harvey, for your incredible leadership and for showing me what a functional and and you know very kind leadership looks like, and for showing me organization and and how to get it together when we really need to get it together. Um, thank you, Dr. Williams, for first of all matching with me with the Terp merch. I appreciate it, <laughs> but <laughs> but most of all for being an incredibly kind and supportive friend for me this past year, and for laughing with me about absolutely everything this past year. Yep, this is what'll do it for me. Um, thank you to the new members for showing me what it means to to come in with passion, to come in with. Um, with an incredible amount of love for what you do. I've learned so much from you guys as is, so much about your passion and so much about, you know, what it means to educate yourself in such a quick capacity, um, but also what it means to educate others and step into leadership no matter what you do, no matter what position you hold. So thank you guys so much for that. Thank you to all of the board members who have shown me what it means to lead, shown me what it means to be in such a position like this and made my experience so wonderful. I'm going to keep going so you guys can like just get used to the tears. Um, thank you to um, my SMOB family, my SMOBily, um, Mrs. Wade, um, Mr. H um, <laughs> Mr. Owens, and Mrs. Harden. Um, you guys have truly created a safe, a safe space for me this past year, and I truly would not have um, been able to get through any of it without all of you guys. You've shown me what it means to be a kind person and, and to grow as a person and not just as a leader. Um, but these people, um, Mr. Owens and Mrs. Harden, also came with me on almost every single school visit after January. Um, so I also got to you know, look at student engagement in a totally different light and a totally different perspective. And I truly could not have, you know, made a lot of the impactful change and written all of these policies without all of them. So thank you guys. I'm going to keep going again, but I'm going to be really fast, I promise, because I know we're like running short on time. Um, but most importantly, I just want to thank Dr. Ebro, who's coming in. I'm so excited for you. You've truly shown me what it means to be an incredible mentor. 
Um, and I'm gonna like end it on thank yous because I know we're running a little short on time and I do not want to be here until 10.35, guys. I looked at the schedule too. <laughs> um, but I do want to share with you guys just a little bit about what's next for me um, as I continue to thank everybody and hopefully stop crying. Um, so I'm headed next year. Um, I will be a freshman at the University of Maryland, if you couldn't tell. Um, I <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll be pursuing a dual degree um, in public policy and government and politics international relations. Um, I've received scholarship, the delegate and senatorial scholarships as well as the public policy Robert L. Mitchell scholarship. And most importantly, before I end things off, I just want to let everybody know that this is home and you don't ever leave home without coming back with something new and hopefully making it a little bit better. So for the final time, maybe I'll get in good trouble. Thanks, guys. Thank you. What you didn't watch was the person sitting next to you getting all, all emotional, too. <laughs> and, she's, and she's up next. So the next item on the agenda the all okay, is unfinished business, consideration of board policies. And for that, I call on the Policy Review Committee Chair, Ms. Pumphrey. Thank you. Members of the board, the Policy Review Committee asks that the board accept the committee's recommendation to amend the following board policies. Policy 5250, students, promotion and retention and graduation requirements. And policy 6306, instruction, schedules, student prayer and religious literature attendance. This recommendation is presented to you on tonight's agenda as Exhibit N. Do I have a motion to adopt the recommendation of the Board Policy Review Committee? So moved, Ms. Hen. Thank you. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Is there any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the consideration of the Central and Northeast Area Middle School Boundary Study Recommendation. And for that, I call Mr. Dixit. And Friends, I think. <laughs> and Mr. Taylor, thanks. Uh, my name is Pete Dixit. I'm Executive Director for Facilities Management and Strategic Planning. I'm joined by, uh, joined with me is my team member, Mr. Paul Taylor. He's Director of Strategic Planning. So, Good evening, Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. We are here to request board approval on the recommendation of the Central and Northeast Area Middle School Boundary Study. The purpose of this study was to establish an attendance area for the new Northeast Area Middle School and expand the attendance area for the uh, Pine Grove Middle School. On May 2nd, 2023, the Board of Education received for consideration a report from the Central and Northeast Area Middle School Boundary Study Committee. The recommended boundary change affect 11 middle schools. The recommendation, known as Option E, affects the boundaries of, and I'll name the schools, Cockeysville Middle School, Dumbarton Middle School, Golden Ring Middle School, Lock Raven Academy, Middle River Middle School, Parkville Middle School, Perry Hall Middle School, Pine Grove Middle School, Ridgeley Middle, Stemmers Run Middle, as well as the new Northeast Area Middle School. A board hearing on the recommended boundary change was held on May 17, 2023. The recommended option, option E, was voted on by the committee who engaged in process of data collection, analysis, and community engagement. The committee attended five meetings where they reviewed hundreds of documents, developed and evaluated options, and worked together to build consensus. We thank them for their time 
and commitment to the process. This concludes our request for the board to approve the central and Northeast Area Middle School Boundary Study Recommendation of Option E. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the recommended Option E for the central and... Oh. Okay, um, so Ms. Pumphrey, before I continue, do you have a motion to amend? Yes, can you just give me a... I, had, I wrote it out, so I need to pull it up. Okay, so I needed to go for first with what I was okay doing. Do you have a motion to approve the recommended option E for the Central and Northeast Area Middle School Boundary Study? So moved, so Dominowski. Okay, so thank you, Ms. Hen. Do I have a second? Second, Dominowski. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Yes. Yes. Just Ms. Pumphrey. A, just a second. Apologize. I'm trying to pull up my... Motion. I move to, am to um, amend the Northeast Boundary Study Map E so that students who attend Halstead Academy will attend D Dumbarton Middle School instead of Lock Raven Technical Academy. Okay, is there a second to Ms. Pumphrey's amendment? Second, second Ms. Frempong. Okay, thank you, Ms. Frempong. Would you like to speak to your um, Motion, Ms. Pumphrey. Yes. Um, so while I greatly appreciate the Boundary Study Committee's d diligent work, I've recently had several Halstead parents reach out to me regarding the Boundary Study maps and expressing their desire for Halstead students to attend Dumbarton Middle instead of Lock Raven Technical Academy. Um, my concern as, is that they may not have shared their opinions previously because elementary schools weren't specifically included in the Boundary Study Committee. Um, additionally, a fellow board member brought to my attention that there was a, um, a member of the committee who spoke to this as well as far as um, wanting um, Dumbarton Middle School, um, excuse me, Halstead Elementary students to attend Dumbarton instead of Lock Raven. Um, and reviewing the maps and the data, it seems, to, it's my understanding that this would also, this change would also increase diversity, which um, is intended to be a primary consideration for the Boundary Study Committee um, when they are um, considering the maps. Thank you. Any further discussion or questions on the Ms. Pumphrey's amendment? Ms. Booker Dwyer? So I have a question because I would like to see the, the numbers regarding diversity because that is my biggest concern with the map as it's posed now. Um, under option E, it looks like we're sending most of the black students to the new Northeast Middle School and to Lock Raven. And then every other school has a pretty much equal match um, racial diversity except for um, Ridgely. And so, so that is my concern. So if Ms. Pumphrey's, uh, sorry, if, um, if, if the option that's posed on the table, if that will allow um, a, a better diversity, then I would be for that. I would, I would support that because that is my um, biggest concern right now with option E. Thank you. Mr. McMillian, did you have a comment or question? Well, I was interested in those numbers. Okay. Uh, do we have those available as far as? So as far as my, I don't have the exact numbers. I sort of compared the options. And initially, D1 was a, an option that was didn't move forward. Um, but I took some of the numbers and looking at the different maps to try to, on my own, look at the change in diversity. So I don't, unfortunately, I personally don't have an exact number for you. I'm not sure if um, staff would be able to so we are not prepared for the numbers. What it will need is an impact analysis and study of numbers of how many students is going to impact and what will be the different percentages uh, of diversity. So we'll have to go back to study that and then get back to you. And I do apologize for asking for bringing this up now, but as I mentioned, I didn't hear from these parents until recently. and. Um, it was also brought to my attention by another board member, and we, you know, thought that this was a concern that needed to be addressed. I would have asked previously if I had gotten the questions from the parents in advance. So I wanted to apologize for that. Ms. Domanowski? Uh, I'm just looking at the current boundaries, and Halstead Academy is currently, right now without the change, was already going to Lock Raven Academy. 99% of their um, 
students were going to Hall to Lock Raven and one percent were going to Park Parkville with before pre change. So I'm I'm just wondering why. My answer to your why would just be because of parents reaching out and me looking at the maps and thinking that that was a good option. But they weren't being moved before. Like, you're moving them when they were, there wasn't, a, like, their current, they're, with option E, their changes, they're not being changed from what they were already, what they were already going to. Like, they were already, According to the current boundaries, they were already supposed to go to Lock Raven Academy. That's what I'm trying to say. But the amendment is to move them to Dumbarton Middle. Is that correct? Not Lock Raven. She's saying that parent. I'm sorry. Just a clarifying question, Ms. Pumphrey. Are you saying that parents reached out and said they would like the change? They they were requesting. So this Dunbarton. was discussed at some of the meetings, some of the um, boundary, study. boundary study meetings um, and with the committee. And um, some of the options that were previously on the table but didn't move forward were sending Halstead students to Dumbarton. So they liked those options, but unfortunately those maps did not move, move forward. Uh, map E moved forward, but with that adjustment, it would include those concerns that the parents brought up during those co committee hearings. Okay, Ms. Frumpong, did you have your hand up before? I did. Um, I'm just looking at the handout that's attached and I think there was a question about, I don't know what the new numbers would be, um, but within the handout that's attached, um, the breakdown for the demographics shows that the current, so for example, at Lock Raven Academy, it's currently 56% black, 18% white, and then 8% Hispanic and 60% farms. Um, Halstead Academy is a predominantly black, a, predominantly, a school that has predominantly black students. Um, and so that would end up increasing um, for Dumbarton. Dumbarton's at 9% Asian, 16% black, 52% white, 6% multiracial, 17% Hispanic, 32% farms, and 20% ELL. So that's page five of that handout. So that's the current, I'm sorry. And then, so option E is on page six. You'll see the demographics there. Okay, thank you. Other comments or discussion? Um, the motion, Ms. Hen, is to adjust the Northeast Boundary Study Map E so that students who attend Halstead Academy will attend Dumbarton Middle School instead of Lock Raven Technical Academy. Thank you, Madam Chair, for restating that. May I ask a clarifying question? Yes. To Ms. Pumphrey, thank you. Um, so just to confirm, this is to move all students that are currently zoned to attend Halstead versus just those that may, the few that may be attending Dumbarton now? My understanding is that Map E, which we, are, we were initially moved to approve, is sending all Halstead students to Lock Raven Academy, unless I'm misunderstanding that. So the motion would be to instead um, have Halstead students attend Dumbarton Middle School. So all students, regardless of where they're currently zoned? If they're zoned for Halstead. I'm sorry, all Halstead students. Yes. Regardless of where they're zoned now, to move them all to Dumbarton. Yes. Okay, and and we we don't have those numbers uh, to understand the impact. Thank you. Thank you. Any other, Ms. Harvey, did you have a question or comment? Not right now. Okay. Any other further questions or comments on Ms. Pumphrey's motion to amend? And, and so we would get the impact study on that, and then it would also look at the boundary lines for the new Northeast Middle School, for all the middle schools in the area. We'll look at all of those boundary lines again. Yes, we'll do whatever the board asks us to do. So just let us know what you'd like for us to analyze. We'll do that, and we'll get back to you. So just procedurally, right now we would vote on Ms. Pumphrey's amendment to do it versus 
a motion to ask for more information, what Ms. Booker Dwyer is saying, correct? Okay. So Ms. Pumphrey's motion is to adjust the map to move Halstead Academy kids to Dumbarton instead of Lock Raven Technical Academy. Um, okay, Ms. Harvey. <laughs> May I offer a friendly amendment? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what was <laughs> friendly. It's a friendly amendment to um, amend the motion to provide the impact study on um, moving from moving. Halstead to Dumbarton. Okay, so is your motion to suspend the vote to provide impact study concerning the number of students who would be affected by moving from Halstead to Dumbarton instead of Halstead to Lock Raven? Is, whoops, she's not there. Okay, go ahead. I just need to clarify. You, you phoned a friend <laughs> and they said. Friend phoned me. <laughs> Go ahead. So my amendment is to strike the change in moving students from Halstead to Dumbarton and add that we be provided an impact study on the on changing the students from Halstead to Dumbarton. Okay. What in order, Madam Chair? I believe that would require a new motion. Okay. Um, one. Amending the amendment. Right. Ms. Harvey is amending the amendment to strike the change in moving Halstead Academy students to Lock Raven to Dumbarton and add an impact study. Did I get that correct, Ms. Harvey? And provide an impact study on that move from Halstead to Dumbarton. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, you have inquiry? Um, yes, Ms. Hen? Yes. Um, I don't believe that's a proper um, amendment to the motion on the floor. If we could okay. receive advice from council. Yes, we're getting we it. We need a new motion. Thank uh, you. Okay. Okay. Yes, can you advise? Yes. Uh, for the record, Darren Burns, Blue Council. Uh, I believe the nature of the. Uh, Darren Burns, Board Council. Uh, the nature of the Second Amendment, Ms. Harvey's amendment, is in essence to obviate the First Amendment, and that's not really a proper amendment. It's as if it's a no vote to uh, Ms. Pumphrey's amendment. So my recommendation to the mo to the amendment proposed amendment maker is either rephrase it or withdraw it um, because I don't think it's a proper amendment to her amendment. Okay, Ms. Harvey. Okay. Ms. I, Ms. Chair, it wasn't seconded, so you would not have to withdraw it if it's never seconded. Okay. Okay. Yes, Ms. Hen? Yes, I'd like to call the question on the um, original motion. Call the, call the question on Ms. Pumphrey's original motion or the or my original motion to vote on the north on the the option E. Yes, ma'am. On the original motion, unless Ms. Pumphrey would like to withdraw it, otherwise I call the question. No. First, we have to process Ms. Pumphrey's amendment before we go back to the original motion. Yes, I'm sorry. Her motion to amend. There are too many open at the moment. Okay. I call the question on her motion to amend. You want to call to question? You oh, you want us to d deal with that? Okay, we didn't have a second on Miss Harvey's, and it wasn't appropriate. There was no second. There was no second. Okay, so back to Miss Pumphrey's. So, Miss Pumphrey, did you want to say something? She called the question, so you had to okay. hit the vote. Okay, so we we'll, may we have a roll call vote, and we had a second from Miss. There was a second from Miss from Pong, correct? Having any more discussion? That's that's the end of discussion now. Because we were. We're in discussion because of Ms. Hen's call to question. So, who second Ms. Umframpong? No, who seconded Ms. Hen's call to question? Oh, 
Do we have a second to Ms. Hen's call to question? No second is needed, Madam Chair. No, thank you. We, okay, may we have a roll call vote on the amendment to adjust Northeast Boundary Study Map E so the students who attend Halstead Academy will attend Dumbart Middle School instead of Lock Raven Technical Academy. Roll call, please. We're voting on Ms. Pumphrey's um, um, move to adjust the Northeast Boundary Study Map. You, you first had to vote on the call of a question. Which okay. Doesn't have to be seconded, but does have to be voted. Does have to be seconded. Okay. May we have a vote, a roll call vote on the call to question? Ms. Dominowski? No. Mr. Mr. Young? No. Ms. Frempong? No. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? No. Ms. Hassan? No. Ms. Pumphrey? No. Dr. Savoy? No. Mr. McMillian? No. Ms. Booker Dwyer? No. Ms. Lichter? No. Thank you. Okay, so the call to question has been taken care of. Now we go back to Ms. Pumphrey's amendment. We've had a we had it second. Is there any further discussion on Ms. Pumphrey's? Ms. Dominowski. I don't know if this can be answered, but if we vote yes on this, how does that I mean, does that throw the it back to the committee and we had to start all over again? What happens? I mean what happens with the process from there? Well, uh, my understanding is that you are requesting information on the impact of that motion, and we'll provide that. So if we... So my understanding, the motion was to move the students to Dumbarton. Has the right and, you're do and you're voting on that, and what you heard from Mr. Dick said is that there's an impact study that needs to take place. Because so, I think in answering your question, you're voting to move the students without the impact study, and it would not go back to the committee. We would just have to move those students based on the direction. If that's the direction of this, if we have board. seven votes, right? If we have seven votes, right. yes. Or we don't. If we don't have the votes, then someone could make a motion for the impact study. Whoops. Okay. Ms. Harvey, did you learn something? So I think to, to your question, it's not going back to the committee. It's the us The committee's right now. done the work. Right? Pete, that's, Paul? That's correct. Okay. Just want to make sure that's clear based on the amendment, amended motion. Okay. Ms. Harvey? So I move to postpone the vote until the board receives information on the impact of the proposed move of students from Halstead to Dumbarton. Second. Okay, any further, dis any discussion or questions on Ms. Harvey's motion to postpone the vote until the Board of Ed receives additional information on the proposed change from for Halstead kids moving from Dumbarton Middle instead of Lock Raven. I think we need to. Madam Chair, do we need to process her. the motion on the floor? Do we need to process? The postponement is a higher motion. We have a motion on the floor, Ms. Pumphreys, before we process. But the postponement motion. would go first before we come back to Ms. Pumphreys. But there's already a motion on the floor that hasn't been processed. It's a higher rank motion. The one that Ms. Harvey has made. So we do Ms. Harvey's first. I'm, I'm getting bored. I'm getting the lawyers' nods that this is the correct way to do it, Ms. Hen. So it's been moved and seconded. Okay, so uh, Ms. Harvey's motion has been moved and second. Any further discussion? So I have discussion. Yes. And so <coughs> that impact study, will it include? Well, I, I would like to add to your motion for it to include all of the schools in the area so that they are racially diverse. Ms. Booker Dwyer, maybe if we ask the staff to share what it means to do an impact study. So you want to share that? Sure. Go ahead. 
Thank you. Uh, based on what I've heard, what we would plan to do is change the boundary to reflect moving all students from Halsted Academy to Dunbarton and then rerun all the numbers, the demographic numbers, the enrollment numbers, et cetera, utilization, and then update, that report, update the report that you already have with new numbers. So the new numbers will be similar, the same process that we used in the original study. Did we answer your question? That is helpful. That will be good. Okay. Okay, may I have a roll call vote on Ms. Harvey's motion to postpone the vote until the board receives additional information on the proposed change from the Halstead Academy students attending Dumbarton instead of Lock Raven Technical? We're going to do a roll call vote. Okay, one last discussion piece. What? That's fine, that's fine. Go ahead. Working on this for months. Right. This affects, I just want to make sure that this is only going to affect, we're not changing any other blocks. It's just this block. Okay. Yeah. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now roll call vote, please. Ms. Dominowski. Madam Chair, to Ms. Dominowski's point. No. Um, we doing a roll call we, vote at this time. Ms. Dominowski. I was going to ask, my hand was raised to restate the motion because it does sound like what staff are saying is that they're going to rerun all of the numbers and the committee worked for months on this plan and it sounds like we're unraveling. I don't want to un do something unintentionally, which is to reopen this study when the work has been done. If we're just talking about, like Ms. Dominowski said, these particular students, that's one thing. It's another to reopen the entire boundary process. And I want to be crystal clear before I vote, which is it? Do you want to restate your, your motion? The motion is to postpone the vote on the boundary study until this board receives an impact analysis on the proposed move of students from Halstead to Dumbarton. Thank you. Thanks. Roll call vote, please, Ms. Gover. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the consideration of the final FY 2024 operating budget, and for that I call on Mr. Hartlove. Good evening, Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, Dr. Williams. Um, just, uh, it's, uh, you're, if you've been following along with our budget, uh, uh, the, the budget uh, cycle, um, as part of approving our uh, operating budget, the County Council uh, voted to uh, cut $500,000 from the school system's administra administration budget. Uh, as you know, we uh, pass our budget by categories. Administration is one of the categories. That particular category totals $64 million. So the, the county council uh, reduced it by $500,000. Um, just as a reminder, uh, we previously reduced central office positions by 51.5 FTE and cut central office discretionary budgets by one2 uh, million as part of this budget uh, process. Um, there is a, an outline of, of the uh, reductions uh, that you should have. Um, it's basically um, uh, a cut, cuts to contract employees, contracted services, supplies and materials, furniture and equipment, and uh, mileage reimbursement. And uh, with that, I open it up for any questions that you have. Okay. Are there questions for Mr. Hartlove? Do I have a motion to approve the final FY 2024 operating budget? I'll so move, Pumphrey. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second, Young. Thank you. Any further discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Ms. Hen? Ms. Harvey? Yes. 
Sorry, yes. We wouldn't Ms. unmute. Head, thank you. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Passes. The next item on the agenda is action taken in closed session, and for that I call Mr. Burns. Chair Lichter, yes. Dr. Williams, member of the board. Oh, thank you. In closed session, the, uh, the board took up a matter of, well, one of the matters it took up was the contract with the superintendent. Um, there was a prior vote to it. If the board would uh, take a motion to uh, adopt the action it took in closed session, if any. I th thought we'd, we didn't do it yet. I thought we did it. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, and that's the only, that would oh, be okay. the only one. Okay, so we're, like thank you. Go. Okay. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, the next item on the agenda is the report on board policies. This is the first reader for these policies, and for that I call Ms. Christina Pumphrey, Chair of the Policy Review Committee. Thank you. Members of the board, the Policy Review Committee asks that the board accept this report of the committee's recommendation to amend the following board policies. Um, I don't know if I should say this now, but I'd like to pull out board policy 8315 to discuss separately. 8315, okay. And um, so uh, board policy 5000, board policy 5330, student activities, student engagement, board policy 6002, instruction, selection of instructional materials, uh, board policy 8400, office of internal audit, board policy 8410, reporting fraud, waste, abuse, and uh, or unlawful act. Board Policy 8420, Anti-Retaliation, and Board Policy 8430, Audit Committee. These policies are presented to you on tonight's agenda as Exhibit R. May I have a motion to accept the recommendation of the Board Policy Review Committee for Board Policies 5000? Motion to amend oh, or to send back or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I, I just, or to pull out one of the policies and discuss. Okay, is that done during the discussion? Do I, or do we stop now for? Amendments, because I thought she just pulled out one to separate. Right. Okay. So which one do you want pulled out, Ms. Dominowski? Fifty-three thirty. Fifty-three thirty. Okay. And so I'd like to separate five thousand also. Five thousand. Yes, please. Miss Hen. Okay. Okay. So, may I have a motion to accept the recommendation of the board's policy review committee for board policies six thousand two, eighty-four hundred, eighty-four ten, eighty-four twenty, and eighty-four thirty. So moved, Harvey. Thank you. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Is there any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dreyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Okay, now we're looking at policy. 5,000. I, may I make a motion, Madam Chair? Yes, please. I move to retain policy 5,000. Students. Is there a second? Okay, no second is heard. Was there anything else anyone wanted to speak to to policy 5,000? So may I have a motion to accept the recommendation of the Board's Policy Review Committee for Board Policy 5000. So moved, Young. Thank you. Um, no second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Any further discussion on Policy 5000? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? No. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Okay, moving to policy 5300, 50, 5330. Is there, is that the one, Ms. Oh, Ms. Dominowski? Yeah. And I'm now realizing I might have the wrong policy, but um, during budget committee, um, we had a motion to 
Um, upon the motion of Ms. Hen, seconded by uh, Ms. Damanowski, the committee voted to request the Policy Review Committee to ask staff to bring a policy recommendation to the committee regarding student member participation, participation on the Budget Committee. Um, I don't know if it's actually this is the policy that I needed to address. Can you? Uh, is it, 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 to send um, back to so fifty three thirty was I can speak to this one um, fifty three thirty does not refer to the budget committee um, no, no. I, none of them do but yeah I'm going to add it to um, a um, do you want a policy review done or yeah like a policy review to add something to add. Um, the student members participation particip I can't even say that word participation in the budget committee as part one of as part of their role as a student member of the board so you want to add to what's already in 5330 yes okay so is that a is that, is that part of 5330 or is that part of or is, uh, that's what I'm saying it might not be that policy is if the, um, so I'm looking at I'm just seeing if this is yeah. what you're referring to. I'm looking under standards where it says student member of the board. Yeah. Is that where you think you're yeah. thinking? It? Mm -hmm. But that might not be this activity one, so that might, might be where I'm confused. Ms. Hassan? Um, so I, I can speak to this one. Um, so as I, as I was coming on, I, I spoke to many people about the budget committee, um, just as, you know, um, understanding the fact that our, uh, currently I don't hold a vote on the budget, um, but my successor will. Um, with that power, however, also comes the autonomy to decide whether or not they would like to be in the budget committee. It is essential that the student member receives training, which is why that's in the law. Um, however, it is truly up to the student member what they choose to pursue. I and no, as much as I, I love the the pattern that we've created in the student member holding leadership in the legislative and governmental relations committee, um, I would not ask my successor to hold that position right after me because I truly don't know if she has a, a passion or interest or is able to engage with that. And I think it's important that we're putting our student member in committees that they are engaged in. As someone who was in committees that I was not engaged in, I was not able to formulate opinions that would you know, impact, positively impact, you know, my, my viewpoint or the board's. I think that's why I'm sending it to policy to discuss, so we can discuss that at a later date and, and talk about why we would like, if, if they decide that no, I would still like to speak to that. Um, it, it, you're, you're going to be confirming a billion dollar budget, and I think that. Um, right, but as are all I'm of you. I'm not done talking. Um, it would, it's, it's, we're not, you should be able to understand, um, and it's you can, doesn't say you can't. You can still belong to any other um, committee, but um, and it's not saying you have to chair it or you have to vice chair it. It's just something that to listen in on um, and to be encouraged in in policy. That's all. Okay, Ms. Pumphrey. I. Th I think that maybe this is something that needs to be discussed as if a policy is needed and maybe not necessarily added to um, 5330. That's my opinion. Okay, so may I have a motion to accept the recommendation of the Board's Policy Review Committee for Board Policy 5330? So moved. Harvey. Thank you. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the Board. Any further discussion? Ms. Gover, roll call vote, please. Ms. Tomanowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? <coughs> yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are now the last one, 8315. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes, sorry. Um, so I would like to move to amend this policy by inserting each of after allocated in under section 3B. Can you repeat that one more time, please? I want to uh, move to amend policy 8315 by inserting each of the words each of after the words allocated in under section 3B. Um, Second, Ben. Thank you. Any, do you want to um, discuss your? Change, Ms. Pumphrey. Just upon so, um, reading the policy, and also someone brought to my attention that it's um, a little confusing as far as whether or not five 
it mentions five um, speakers from each of those four categories, and it, it makes it more clear by adding each of so that um, it's five from each of the four categories and not five total okay. overall through four, category, four categories, excuse me. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion on Ms. Pumphrey's um, change? Okay, roll call vote, please, on the change that Ms. Pumphrey described. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Now we need, now we go back and vote on that. Okay. Can May I have a can we discuss it for a second? I just have one question. I'm sorry. Okay. Does this, will this change the implementation that we currently have set for the public policy right now? No, and I actually meant to mention that previously. As far as um, the, some of the public comment that we heard tonight regarding um, the waiting list, the online sign up, that is not, was not written, written in the prior policy either. That's something that was um, formed based on the policy, but not, it wasn't, those details weren't in the actual policy itself. May I have a motion to accept the recommendation of the Board Policy Review Committee for Board Policy 8315? As amended. So moved, Dominowski. Thank you. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Any further discussion? Ms. Gover, roll call vote, please. Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempo? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Okay, let me just scroll through these. Okay, next on the agenda <coughs> is contract awards, and for that I call on Ms. Harvey, Chair of the Building and Contracts Committee. Thank you, Chair Lichter. Members of the board, the board's Building and Contracts Committee met on Monday, June 12, 2023. At this time, I would like to separate Id out items S20. Items S1 through S19 are being forwarded to the full board for approval. Do I have a motion to approve items S1 through S19? Can, can we discuss? After, yeah, that comes next. That's okay. Mr. McMillian, thank you. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Any discussion? Ms. Dominowski. Sorry. Okay. Um, I, I know I mentioned this the last meeting about getting more information with the contracts as far as we have the contract authority, but what do we actually need to spend um, right now? And I didn't know if that was discussed. At, I'm sorry, I missed the, I wasn't able to view the meeting, but was that discussed in the last meeting? So. Yes, we did discuss that in the meeting. Uh, we are working with the BCPS staff to update the recommendation form to include information that's uh, more uh, linear and connected in nature and uh, has more information pertinent to our decision making. So I'm concerned only because there's two contracts in here, one for 25 million and one for 30 million, and they're brand new contracts and there's no really it's just, it, we don't have an idea of who the contracts are with and what, it's over, if they're over five years, they can spend this amount of money, but we don't know what they're buying with that money. Are you requesting to separate those contracts out? I guess I would probably want to ask questions to the, um, it was... number nine and number 10. Yeah, technology support staffing services, nine and CWA 11. Mr. Gosto, Mr. Yeah. Hartlove, please come to the table. So prior to discussing S9 and S10, uh, I'm moving forward items S1 through S8 and S11 through 19. I'm amending. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do I have a motion to approve items S1 through S8 along with S11 through S19? So moved, so Young. Moved. Thank you. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the board. 
Any discussion on S1 through S8, S11 through S19? May I have a roll call vote, please? I'm sorry, could you tell me who um, Yeah, who moved. did the first and second? Mm -hmm. Mr. Young made the motion. Made the, um, the motion. The, Ms. Kalinowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frampong? Yes. Ms. Han? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. So now we are talking about S9 and S10. Ms. Domenowski, do you have questions for staff? Okay. Yes. So the first one, S9, was to add one more bidder, I guess, to a group of 27 to make 28 vendors available, correct? Correct. Yeah, this is one that was already it was approved at the prior meeting, I believe, and we're we're just adding one additional vendor. So that one, um, it's no additional fiscal impact. It's the it's already been approved, other than just in the one uh, vendors being added to the list. And do we were we provided with what we were buying from these vendors for thirty million dollars over five yeah, years? Yeah, I, I can go through it again. Okay, so sorry. for this contract, that's um, the contract that supports our IT. Um, field technicians, so that's, as again, a multi-year contract, so that's for all of our contract staff um, to provide help to support field, network field tech support, and it's our standard contract that we've had for a number of years. So this is the recompete um, for, that includes a number of bidders. So uh, whenever we need staff, um, the bid request goes out to these bidders, they provide us names and rates and we look at the resumes and then we select who we want okay thank you and then the other one s10 yeah is the 25 million um five it's so there was this was for only one bid. we only accepted one bid correct no this is for 60. oh 60. yeah so on the on the uh, contract document that you have it has the list of the uh, bidders and could they be okay. awarded to? yep and what are we so this is this contract here is again it's, it's a multi-year contract and it's set up to provide additional staff highly skilled IT staff so we'll have project managers software developers um, business analysts subject matter experts um, for example we do intend to leverage this contract for the subsequent ERP implementation to augment the work that the integrator, once the contract's awarded. Uh, we also, I also intend to leverage this for subject matter expert, experts in uh, governance for um, IT delivery. Uh, so it's, it's set aside, it has 27 bidders, I believe, um, on this one, again, it's multi-year. Uh, so we do anticipate to be using it through the year. And just to give you a point of reference, so this last fiscal year uh, was about 2.9 million um, in expenditures for under, under the previous contract. For one year? For one year. So and this is a five year. For 25 million? For 25, yes. So this is where I, I, I would like to see more of an example of what we're spending as far, or what we need, because we're, Yes, I know it's an authority. You don't have to spend all that. I know. I'm sorry. It's like a whole. He's like, hey, you've heard this so many times. But um, I just, it's important for um, transparency reasons that what we are actually spending and that we have the funding to actually do it. Because we're allowing you to spend thirty million dollars over five years, but are we? Do we actually have that? Yeah, and, and but again, and I'll let <laughs> folks speak to that. But in this example, you give us the spending authority for five million. We still have to go through the budgeting process. So I am going to put in my request for what I ex expect to have done um, for that fiscal year. It goes through the process, gets approved. I'm only going to spend whatever funding I have approved. Even though the spending authority may be five million, if I'm only allocated or approved 2.5, I'm not gonna go over the 2.5. So maybe that would be good like to come, like a comeback. Like this is what we allowed you to have, this is what I went and get, and we should update that in our contracts like when it, as it happens. So like I spent this much, this is what I paid, this is what I got with the money, this is what we have left. Instead of just saying like this is what I spent, this, but what you actually spent it on. So we know, we can compare it year by year. Like I, I bought five IT guys for here, whatever it is. You know what I'm trying right. to say? Like it, it's just, um, just looking at the numbers is, 
it's 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 a lot of money, mm -hmm. and it, I would like to see what we're spending it on. That's all. Thank you. Say something. Okay. Any other questions about S9 or S10? Okay. Um, wait a second. May I have a roll? No. Do I have a motion to approve S9 and S10? So moved, Harvey. No second is needed since the recommendation comes from the committee. Any further discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Harvey? Thank you all. Thank you, Ms. Webster. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Harvey, I think you yes. have something else to I say. With regard to item S20, I am moving to postpone the approval of the comprehensive maintenance plan in item S20 uh, to the September 11, 2023 building and contracts meeting in anticipation of receipt of the facilities uh, report prior to approving that plan. So we are, uh, I am moving to postpone that from the approval of S20. May I have a second? Ms. Hen, was that a second? Second, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Harvey, is there anything else you'd like to say about your motion? So just to, to for the board's edification, we were, um, we we're being asked to approve the plan. The facilities report is part of that plan. So the, the Building and Contracts Committee uh, requested to see that report prior to approving the uh, the, the CMP plan, the com Comprehensive Maintenance Plan. The um, uh, Education Facilities Master The plan. EFMP plan uh, is also a part of item S20, which we have already received information on as a board and can move forward with that. Okay, so, um, May I have a roll call vote to postpone the approval of the comprehensive maintenance plan as presented in item S20 to the September 11, 2023 Building and Contracts Committee meeting? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Harvey? You have one more thing? You move to approve the Education Facilities Master Plan. Oh, I'm so sorry. As presented in item S20. So moved. <laughs> Do I have a second? So. Second, Pumphrey. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Any questions on approving the Education Facilities Master Plan as presented in item S20? Then may I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right, I'm just got to scroll through. The next item on the agenda is the considerations. So make sure I'm in the right place. Um, oh, nope, I'm not. One back. The next item on the agenda is the consideration of the curricula changes for 2023 2024. As outlined in policy and rule 6000, each year, staff from the Division of Curriculum and Instruction present new courses of study for approval. At the February 23rd, 2023 Board Curriculum Committee meeting, staff presented an overview of the new, changed, and deactivated courses for the 23-24 school year and beyond.
Courses being developed span multiple academic content areas, including, for example, 15 new courses in performing arts and advanced placement courses, proposed changes to six courses in ESOL and performing arts, and deactivation of 33 courses. The Board Curriculum Committee voted to approve these new and proposed course offerings, and I submit them today to the full board for approval as outlined in policy and Rule 6000. May I have a motion to approve the Curriculum Committee's recommendation on the proposed changes to curricula for the 23-24 school year? So moved, Pumphrey. Thank you. No second is needed as it comes from the committee. Any further questions or discussion? Mr. McMillian. I think I'm going to. I don't know who's going to answer these. Uh, I think. Um, and the two physical education fitness foundations with lab courses, it states all high schools will over. Does that mean, or should it be offer? So we will have Dr. Boswell McComas and Ms. Shea to come to the table and respond to these questions. So it, and both of them will offer. So they're going to offer the, the one credit class and 2.5 classes. Yes, sir, that's correct. Um, we've heard from several of our high schools. Sometimes students transfer in from other um, LEAs or other school districts coming to us with already having a 0.5. And the graduation requirement is 1.0. And students were expressing frustration that we required them to take our only course offering at 1.0, which essentially left them with 1.5 credits beyond what they needed for graduation. This also allows us to have flexibility in master scheduling with some of our other 0.5 courses, like the change in our health education that's now 2.5s, um, as well as our um, personal finance and economic theory, which is now our financial literacy course. Um, so students still have to meet the 1.0 credit in PE, but now they have various pathways to do that. So even if they don't come in from another school system, they could take the two they sure point could. Fives yep. if it works out in their schedule better. Absolutely. That's the goal is to provide as much flexibility for students so that their entire course, um, their six-year plan, their uh, opportunities throughout high school offer as much flexibility as possible. Okay. And how about the health class? What's going on there on the next page? Well, <laughs> um, we had some changes in MSDE to, our, <clears throat> excuse me, our comprehensive health education framework, which increased the graduation requirement for high school to a 1.0 um, from a 0.5. So almost the, the flip here. And um, with that, the recommendation was that that 1.0 be split as two 0 0.5 courses, one that takes place in the 9-10 grade span, so students can take it either in grade 9 or 10, and then another in grade 11 and 12. And that's intentional because they found, especially using a lot of data from national health reporting, uh, it was important that students through their high school career had multiple touch points with comprehensive health education as their developmental and health needs changed. We wanted to make sure that we were meeting them with that comprehensive health education. So we wanted them to actually experience it multiple times over their high school career, which again then affords them that flexibility to match it with other 0.5 credit classes that we offer. Now, will that cause, will there be more of a need for health teachers? Over time, yes. So what we found um, over time was that there was a, um, a small opportunity where we had students who were part of the old cohort that had to finish the old requirement of the way they were taking the health class. So we had about a two-year span as we were um, exiting students who were followed um, under the old cohort as well as the new students. So that actually has been last year and this year where we were supporting high schools, um, but that will level out. So they, won't, they might need more of health and less of something else, but overall it won't change the staffing. We just had a two-year uh, window where we had to work to support our high schools. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? May I, Ms. It's not, really, it's not really a question. It's just, it was part of what um, Board Member McMillian was saying, because it says over instead of offer, and then there's also 0 .05, so it's 0.5 Correct. credits? Okay. 0 0.5, yes, we can edit that and make that correction. Thank you for letting me know, both of you. <laughs> Thank you, anyone else? May I have a roll call vote, please, Ms. Gover? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Rempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker-Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
The next item on the agenda is the consideration of the 2023-2024 organizational chart per board policy 2310. And for that, I call on Dr. Williams. Board policy 2310, annually the superintendent will prepare an organizational chart and submit it to the board for pr approval. It's that time of year, board. Uh, the chart will include positions that report directly to the superintendent and positions at the executive director level. Dr. Yarborough, will you come to the mic, please? Thank you. Good evening, Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. As required by policy 2310, Positions at the executive director level and above are included in the FY24 proposed organization chart for your review and approval. These changes focus our resources of people, time, and funding closer to schools to create experiences that enable all students to achieve improved learning outcomes. As part of our continued efforts to strategically align our work and focus on teaching and learning, the FY24 proposed organizational structure reflects the following changes. One, based on the need to fast forward for the fall, we will postpone the hiring of a deputy superintendent. In lieu of that position, a chief operating officer has been added to ensure smooth, smooth efficient operations to school during this critical time. Using State of Maryland 1003 school improvement grant funds and existing vacancies for funding, the following positions are proposed. One, executive director of school support and improvement to lead a team that provides direct, differentiated focus support on grades K through 12 to 15 CSI, comprehensive support and improvement, and TSI, targeted support and improvement schools and collaborate across central offices to ensure aligned services to schools focused on improving teaching, learning, and best practices. One, executive director for high schools to provide additional time and support for principal supervisors to coach, guide, and help high school principals improve instruction to meet the needs of our students. The following departments have also been proposed to move to align resources closer to schools equity and cultural proficiency to the chief of staff, data research and accountability to the chief operating officer, organizational development, and social emotional support and health services to the chief of schools. May I have a motion to approve the 2023-2024 organizational chart per board policy 2310? So moved, Pumphrey. Thank you, is there a second? Second, Booker DeWire. Thank you, any discussion? Mr. McMillian? I'm just curious why there's, there's a bunch of executive directors fall under these slots, and then there's others like athletics. Is the athletic top spot still the coordinator of athletics? Director of athletics. The director of athletics. Yes. So how about transportation, the director of transportation? Director. And the same for food nutrition, the director? Correct. Food nutrition. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or discussion? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempo? Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Mrs. Hassan? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? <coughs> yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Passes. The next item on the agenda is the collective bargaining master agreements, and for that I call Ms. Charlie Green and Ms. Bilski. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, good evening, board chair uh, Lichter, vice chair Harvey, Dr. Williams, members of the board. I'm here this evening uh, with Ms. Bilski to share uh, for your consideration the collective bargaining agreements for our five employee associations. At this time, I turn it over to Ms. Bilski. Good evening. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you for this opportunity. All five um, bargaining units, negotiations with all five bargaining units have concluded. We've submitted tentative agreements on articles for each of the five for your um, review and approval. I'd be happy to take questions. Okay. 
So we'll do questions in a sec. May I have a motion to approve the collective bargaining master agreements for AFSCME, BCP, SOPE, CASE, ESPBC, and TAPCO? <coughs> May I have a motion? So moved, Booker DeWire. Thank you. Is there a second? Second, Pumphrey. Okay. Any discussion? Questions from the board? Okay. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Dominowski? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Frempong? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Ms. Pumphrey? Yes. Dr. Savoy? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Booker Dwyer? Yes. Ms. Lichter? Yes. Thank you. It passes, and thank you both for all your work on um, the collective bargaining units and agreements. It's a process. Okay. The next item on the agenda is informational items, including the 2023 Stakeholder Survey System Report, 2023-2024 Special Education Staffing Plan, ESSA Accountability, Financial Report for April 2023, Revised Superintendent Rules 4203, 4402, 7260, and 7520. Students Count 2022 Revised, and the System Improvement Team End of the year update. Um, wait a second. I just gotta scroll through all these. The next item on the agenda is board committee updates and board member comments and agenda setting. So we'll start with the audit committee. Mr. McMillian, any updates? Yes, please. At our May 23rd meeting, the Office of Internal Audit presented the student enrollment process and data accuracy audit results. It's, they also presented it's the FY24-27 proposed work plan and the April 2023 investigation statistics. As a reminder, all audit reports are posted to the Office of Internal Audit website. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, Budget Committee, Ms. Dominowski. Okay, this is where I was going to talk to you, Ms. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the, at the May 31st Budget Committee meeting, um, a motion was passed to recommend to to request the Policy Review Committee and ask staff to bring a policy recommendation to the committee regarding student member participation on the Budget Committee. Um, basically, we're asking for um, the, the policy review to look at a, a policy or adjusting the student um, member to uh, be more involved in the budget committee um, in years past now that they're allowed to vote on the budget. Our next meeting is uh, June 21st, which is next Wednesday. It's virtual at 530. Thank you. Buildings and contracts, Ms. Harvey. Uh, yes, the building. The next building and contracts meeting will be on Monday, July 10th at 5 p.m. virtually. As stated earlier, the building and contracts committee is working with our school liaisons to update the uh, contracts recommendation form, and we look forward to at a future date presenting that to the committee. Thank you. Next is curriculum committee, and that is me. Our next meeting is next Thursday. Um, we will continue to hear presentations on contracts that will be sent to the curriculum committee, as well as start some planning for the upcoming school year and discuss the new ELA elementary um, PD plan to go along with the materials that we approved recently. Equity committee, Dr. Savoy. Our next meeting is the 22nd at 4 o'clock, and Ms. Harvey set in for me when, in my absence. So, did you have any comments? So our last meeting of the Equity Committee was with the Equity Council. The Equity Council presented a uh, comprehensive set of umbrella goals for the system to consider working on, and they will be moving forward with uh, taking those umbrella goals and uh, reducing them to measurable outcomes for the Equity Committee and the board to consider for movement in BCPS. Thank you. Thank you. We'll skip the Legislative and Government Committee because the session has ended. And then the last one is Policy Review Committee, Ms. Pumphrey. 
I'll just say our next meeting is um, June 26th, and um, I'm also keeping track of any requests from board, other board members regarding policies that um, they would like to be reviewed in the future or additional policies that we may discuss um, to bring forth. Okay, thank you for that, and thank you for all your work on all the policies that were presented um, this evening. Next is board member comments and agenda items. Um, is there anyone who has a comment or an agenda item that they would like to share? Ms. Frampong. Just on a lighter note, happy early Father's Day to the fathers. Happy early Father's Day. Okay, well thank you. Anybody else? So we want to thank, that's a, what, the first for have Father's Day? All right, early Father's Day. Okay, so thank you everyone. Thank you everyone who had input in tonight's meeting. Um, and um, at this time, whoops, I think, hold it, let me check my script. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next board meeting will be held on Tuesday, July 11, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Thank you for joining us tonight. The meeting is now adjourned.